All right, everyone, we're going to get this meeting started. Yeah. Let's get everyone set it down. What's up? How's it going? Um, all right, I'm going to call this meeting to order. It is 7.09 here on Wednesday, October 16, 2019. Beautiful night in Studio City. Let's do the roll call. Uh, Richard. Adams. Joe. Okay. Brian. Here. Michael. Here. Randall. Here. Alex. Here. Raduka. Hey. Mara. Lisa. Here. Richard N. I know he's doing someone. Yeah, Richard. Jesse. Here. Uh, Rick. Yep, here. Alexa. Uh, Alexa's, uh, excuse us. Um, Adam. Here. Tony here. Joseph. And Lana. Here. All right, great. We're all here. We're going to move on to number two. So this mm -hmm. is going to be the public comment section first before I give the update. So let's start with Eric Press. Or public, uh, yeah, public comment. General public comment. Right up front. That's okay. Yeah. We, we, no, I don't know. I mean, I'm not. As, as I already finished it twice, right. I mistakenly no. looked off the agenda. Okay. So, no. it's, no. so the general public comment. Well, it's nice to be together again. Um, I was thinking about uh, the experience of serving on on the board, which I had a experience couple years ago doing, which was great. It, it was a good opportunity to, you know, move things along and participate in the local government. There was one aspect that I found challenging, which was not overstating your own individual view or opinion. You know, if you're on the board, you have to try to be a bit too which I know you all do. And that um, creates a kind of a you know, a balance because everybody is is um, you know listening and then voting, and that's the power of the vote. So um, I you know I just want to speak about it because I, I think it's happened. It happens that you know it comes up. What is the appropriate line about you know sharing your views versus the views of a? And I mean, you're the president, so you're entitled to more or less you know decide. You'll get the board to vote if it's a big opinion. And then you are in charge of the And then there's, you know, individual committee chairs have their own jurisdiction. And it's in that space that it came up that, you know, who can serve and who can't serve and do you have to have views. And one of the people in the public was, you know, against one of the projects in town, so was politely dismissed from serving on the land use. And the other is on the land use committee, and he hit, but he shares his views. So the question is, you know, maybe it could be agendized at some point in the future is, what is the approach? Because I think all of us have views, which is really I mean, I don't think anybody should be blocked from having their own views, but I do think that also we want to, you know, experience committees that are vibrant and that are not, you know, kind of rigged, not by, you know, in one way or the other, because I haven't said, but you can imagine that you could easily just decide that we're going to have a committee that only votes the way I want it to vote, or the other one that votes the only way it Thank you, Mr. Redmond. So that's my uh, request. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Logan Smith. He's here now. Personal uh, Hi friends, like Brian mentioned, I'm here in a personal capacity as a volunteer with the uh, re-election campaign for Adrian Nazarian. Uh, for those of you who don't know, he is the incumbent assemblyman in the 46th district, which includes Studio City. Uh, I am here gathering signatures to help place the assemblyman back on the ballot for his re-election campaign. Uh, if you support the assemblyman, wonderful. If you're interested in signing, uh, please let me know. And uh, I'll uh, come by, just raise a hand or wave at me, and I'll uh, remind past the clipboard. If you've already signed for another candidate or already signed uh, for Adrian Nazarian, uh, please be advised you cannot sign a second uh, ballot designation sheet. Uh, so, like I said, if you're interested, just raise a hand, wave me down. Thank you very much. Okay. Good question? Yeah. Sir, just a quick question. Yeah. Are you saying that if, if you sign to put Adrian Nazarian on the ballot, if you're a resident, mm -hmm. You can't sign to put, you know, another candidate on the ballot? Not for the same race. That's what you just said. No, I know, but it's strange because you would think, if you would think you would just, yeah. Hold on. No, it's just an interesting area. Okay, so that's your short Yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay. Thank you. 
All right, so I'm just going to do a really quick update here. So, you know, one of the things that we've been trying to do as we are you know, a two thirds new board here, we just have been trying to revamp a couple things, standardize a couple things, codify things that might have been confusing or weird. So, uh, one thing I wanted to bring up is, is the practice of committees using special meetings. Um, and it, it's been said, like, where the rule technically is there shouldn't be a special meeting within a 24 hour period. And this is, I guess, mainly for our committee chairs and other people who serve on our, our great committees. Um, the 24 hour limit will only be moving forward. I'm just going to make this just a clean cut now so everyone can have the same equity on this. Uh, there will be no more 24 hour special meetings unless there is an issue that actually requires it that's approved by either me or the Vice President Brady. So I just wanted to say that. just. You know, I've been guilty of that myself, and so this is just a way to kind of do a clean break and moving forward. So, um, that being said, I just want to do a really quick, just kind of open appointment of liaisons. Um, if, if anyone else wanted to be a liaison to the city from City of City, uh, you know, I want to use this time to take all the volunteers and just do an official, you're the liaison right now. Um, I know that, uh, I was gonna appoint someone to resilience. Uh, uh, Rachel. Oh, Rachel is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So just like w without any sort of any opposition, I'd like to appoint Rachel uh, as our resilience liaison. If they're willing to do it, let them have it. All right. Sure. Um, anybody else want to uh, have any interest on a liaison position? I'm already a homelessness. So. Yeah. Right. What other openings are there? Um, I don't have to listen in front of me, but I can make that list available. So, all okay. right. Uh, then she is officially the resilience liaison. I want to move on now to number three, the council district update. Jessica. Hi. Mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. Um, I guess I'll sit even though I'll get something. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to sit. So after I had a meeting with Lisa Karajian, she suggested a great idea. Um, it's going to be hard for me because I'm super busy, but I'll, you know, I did it. Um, yeah to give you guys my notes in advance, to add a little space to you know, make notes whenever you come up with something. Um, so you have it in advance, and that way you're like, oh, I think Jessica said X, Y, Z, and you don't feel like watching an hour-long video. Uh, you can just pull up my notes. I think that it, makes, it would make it easier for everyone, so thanks, Lisa, for the great idea. And so you guys have a copy of that. Um, so first thing on the list is the uh, neighborhood traffic management plan. The next meeting will take place on October 24th. Uh, this meeting was scheduled for those observing Yom Kippur who could not attend the last meeting. Um, the Chabad Jewish Center, Rabbi Beidelman, will be graciously allowing us to use his property for this meeting. And uh, we'll be hosting another one, the final one, in early November. And then I'm hoping that the board will host the consultants for the November meeting. Currently, the consultants cannot make your date, so I'm working with them to see if they can get someone else in their department to come that night. Because I really believe it would be convenient, especially since the council member is speaking, that uh, for your next month's meeting. So I'll be in touch with you on that. Uh, I have the flyers. I have some in the back. If you guys need any more, feel free to email me, and I'll email this to you as well. I will be beginning canvassing tomorrow morning again. Uh, for those people, and uh, we're going to be sending a targeted letter for the communities that live in the area. So that should be getting a mail letter as well. Because I can't possibly bring up on everyone's door. Um, <coughs> next up is short-term rentals. Um, I had I, I brought these before, but I'm bringing them again. It's just the FAQ from City Planning's website about the new uh, ordinance that passed before and that before it goes into effect. It went into effect in July, and enforcement doesn't begin until November 1st. Uh, these FAQs for anyone who's a property owner who's interested in the Airbnbs or any other type of short-term rental who doesn't like them. Either way, familiarize yourself with this um, handy information. The planning department is hosting a home sharing uh, info excuse me, information session uh, October 23rd at the North Holly Recreation Center from 6 to 8 p.m. For anyone interested in this, and this is, by the way, the calls in our office, pretty much all of the calls are linked to Airbnb or this studio city. 98% of them. So I highly recommend that someone from the board attend this meeting. Uh, I will be there. 
I will, I'm happy to email it to all of you guys. I'll send it to the, does the board at Studio City email still work? Does, does everybody yeah. get, okay. I'll send that, this flyer to the board email so that you guys are aware that somebody to attend this meeting. I just printed it out and passed Okay, great. Um, it's gonna be very useful information because I believe you meet, you will start getting more calls. And the flyer is also in the back for those interested. Um, just a note, uh, I'm still getting calls from the City of City Beautification Association. Perhaps you guys want to invite them to come to the board and speak. They want to move forward with beautifying the median island ways. They cannot do that without financial support. We can assist them, but only matching your funds. We can't just give them the funding. Um, and last but not least, we are working on a Ventura Boulevard beautification day. I'm going to rephrase the, the term after my meeting earlier today with the Hope team. Uh, Public Safety Committee and the Land Use Committee will help um, this event, which is scheduled to take place Sunday, November 10th. Uh, the parking lot that we chose is actually county. I thought it was metro. It's county, so I'm working on confirmation to see if they'll charge us, and if they do, how much we'll live, we'll just pay it and take care of that issue. Um, we're having a conference call tomorrow for the committee. If anyone else is interested in joining, our little mini committee to create the cleanup beautification event, just let me know and I'll add you to that. Um, that is all I have for now. Any questions? Uh, Eric, does public comment? Oh, just Yeah, uh, so thank you for the, for the comments. And I thought the um, October 8th neighborhood transportation management plan update meeting was interesting. You know, it came up that uh, it was somehow our responsibility, the neighborhood council's responsibility, to have notified the community. And I think, you know, people, 20 people found out, but maybe hundreds or thousands didn't. So I'm glad that we're bringing the word out more widely. Um, you know, I don't even know if people know what it's about, frankly, but there was a proposal that was, I'll do it in my time, that was from to shut the faucet off to two-way traffic on Carpenter going by the school, so that only traffic would only go uh, south towards the hill. So people coming down the hill, Royal Canyon, would typically, if they want to, if they're not going straight to the freeway, they want to make a right to get away from that snarl. And the neighbors evidently, somebody brought it to the attention that maybe it would be better if they couldn't do that. So that, you know, they would come down the hill, make the right, and then go Sunshine Terrace, and then not be able to go down Carpenter. So they would go up a little higher, maybe and wind through, which brought some of the people on the streets up there, myself included, disclosure. You know, wondering about, isn't that just going to drive them? So, you know, it seems like a big thing, and it feels like it's kind of a citywide issue, even though it's, you know, potentially local. So I was glad that, you know, it's going to get more attention now, because I, I think that, you know, frankly, if we do that, if we agree, I don't like that, you know, just speaking on behalf of myself, but if we do that, we may as well put a little billboard up that shows the finger to the people coming down the hill, because that is really tough. It's not like Carpenter, it's a public school, it, it is a narrow road, there were some great proposals to like think about adjusting the parking on that particular stretch to make it so that people can go both ways and work it out as well. You know, I know that ways is an obsession of the council members and it's a good and area. You know, I don't like it either, by the way, but for different reasons. Anyway, I just wanted people to know that it's an important discussion because it affects all of us, including the people. Many of us are the people coming down. So thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Any other questions on the board? Yeah. The, um, the committee that you referred to, Jessica, with regard to the charitable or least community cleanup, what committee is that? Public Safety Committee, Land Use Committee. I, I understand. Was there a separate committee that you were referred oh, to? Oh, no, 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 I just call it that, no. I see, but it's yeah. it's not an actual No. Committee. Okay. Just mine, okay. okay. Anyone down here going around? Yeah. Uh, two quick things. One, where is beautification planning on doing a medium? And also... I have uh, several of them, so I'll let you can speak with... Um, the president about that for now. Okay, and then uh, bring to your attention, I'll email you later, Council File 1912-13. Uh, your boss is one of the ciders on this, requesting uh, maintain and present, present an ordinance to forbid the use of digital and et cetera. Digital? Uh, let me see, what does it say? It says... Digital uh, sign -up? Yeah, uh, no, he uses digital applications and digital infrastructure to reroute vehicular traffic that is inconsistent with city street designations. 
I'll email you, but I'd like to see whatever you guys came up with sure. that generated this. You email me and I'll connect you with Julia, our, our policy deputy. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Richard. Yesterday, it's, been, it's just great. It's been hard enough to get out of my driveway on the street with all the waves and all the traffic. I parked in the street. I couldn't even get away from the curb. It's getting worse. I, maybe it's not just waves, but it seems like it's getting worse. But you can't pull away from the curb. Thank you. Uh, and Alex. Yeah. Hi. Oh, How are you? I didn't see your hand. Hi, Alex. You did a slide one. <laughs> Uh, you know what, I was going to ask, because um, I'm, I'm a fan of medians, I love medians. I think they're pretty and we, we take the opportunity to, to make dress them up and make them nice. Uh, my concern is that, is there an, uh, an effort to expand medians, or are, they, are we keeping the ones that we currently have? Because my problem is with our lack of uh, trap, you know, we need more lanes. Yes. Uh, my concern is emergency vehicles not being able to use the medians anymore to get through, uh, especially on thoroughfares like the Tura Boulevard. Unless there's like a practical, I mean, there's an aesthetic. Yeah, so it's, it's an wonderful. aesthetic beautification of existing medians that are not. So medians that basically have nothing done to them are the city's looking spaces. Right. The but proposal is to. That, I'm wondering if medians are going to pass their use because, uh, you know, those uh, hook and ladders can't get through, uh, say, uh, East West along the Ventura Boulevard. There's no way. So when they don't have those medians to kind of come through, we, we lose that and it can cause danger to many people's lives. What are you suggesting? Not having them. Uh, well, they were already approved. So. I know it's already done, but I think they're, they're still expanding medians just to, for you None know, that I'm aware of ever. in my district. By that I mean studios in the The one on Ventura is recent. Yeah. 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 It's just an interesting five. thing. It does, right? Like Trust me when I tell you, we do yeah. not have the money. And just to see uh, emergency vehicles stop is heartbreaking. They, so in, technically the way it's supposed to work, if, if they're going to take away some sort of width of the street, they have to get approval from the fire department and street services and LA to do that. Oh, I see. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. So now I just want to back up for a second because now that my heart rate is down from running around uh, before this meeting, uh, I missed a couple things. So I just want to say that without objection, I'd like to file the September minutes uh, that were linked uh, to the agenda. No objection. September minutes are filed. Um, and then, of course, I couldn't remember last night her news, Rachel Tobias, and she is now our resilience liaison. So thank you very much, in my case. Uh, moving on now to number four, which we're doing a quick swap here. Uh, we'd like to welcome the new Dunn General Manager, uh, Rotel Beltran. Thank you, Mr. Chairman uh, and members of the, of the Neighborhood Council. My name is Raquel Beltran, and I am very happy to be here today as your general manager for the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment. And um, I, I want to acknowledge um, the Neighborhood Empowerment Advocate, who is your NEA, that is here with me today. And he comes to all your meetings, and that's Gibson. <laughs> Gibson is an outstanding member of our staff. He has made, I'm, this is my fifth week on the job. I'm, I'm impressed by the work that he does. And, uh, I can only hope that he will continue to make the contributions that I'm seeing him make in just a short period of time that I've, I've been with the department. So I can tell you, you're, you're fortunate to have him as your NEA, and I'd like to thank him publicly for his for his work. Thank you very yeah. much. For that. <laughs> He's very dedicated to the mission of the department, and what I am doing on uh, this listening tour that I've started since joining the department in mid-September is sharing with people what the mission is for the department. The, the stated mission for the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment is to make government more responsive to local needs through a structured system of neighborhood councils. That's what I've been hired to do. I've, uh, as part of the listening tour, I've list, enlisted the support of the department's directors, our director's team, to schedule me throughout the city to try to have a balanced and geographically distributed approach and strategy to 
to the listening tour. And um, so far, I think, I believe I'm averaging about six neighborhood councils a week. I've attended 18% um, of the neighborhood councils since joining the department in mid-September, along with five alliances and the budget allocates. At the rate that I'm going, uh, mm -hmm. given the support of my family, I expect to be able to get through them by, by February. So. Um, I'm really happy. I've been well received and I have appreciated the discussions that have been very robust as one would imagine with all the neighborhood councils I've met with so far. In terms of my background, um, what I just would describe and share is that uh, my background is basically in public administration, labor and community organizing, and nonprofit and volunteer board governance. In terms of public administration, it's both having worked for elected officials as well as having worked in departments. Not all people have both experiences. I've worked with three city council members, a member of the Board of Supervisors in my hometown of, of San Diego. And in terms of working in departments, I've worked as assistant to the planning di director. I've worked as a staff member to the city's <coughs> public services and safety count subcommittee of the city council, and I've worked in the county health department. In terms of, but all of my public administration experience was preceded by community work and organizing. I always tell people who tell me that they're fantasizing with the idea of running for public office. And when they ask for advice, I always tell them two things. One is, check with your family, because they're going on the ride as well. But the other is, do something in the community. Make sure you have a foundation in the community, because it helps shape the kinds of policies that you're going to be considering as you move forward if you're so lucky to be elected by the public to be a public servant. My experience includes, just as a couple of examples, I'm co-founder for a labor union called United Domestic Workers of America, organizing domestic workers on both sides of the U.S.-Mexico border, San Diego-Tijuana border. In the Bay Area, as another example, I was hired by the American Red Cross to create and design and implement a volunteer recruitment program to increase the diversity of volunteers that are prepared to respond and support the American Red Cross when they respond to disasters both locally and on a national level. In the Bay Area, I was, would be very common, in, I was in five counties, I would be in Half Moon Bay, Oakland, and Gilroy all in one day, training people to be organized in that volunteer system. 21 years ago, my husband Jerry Grooms and I moved to Los Angeles with, with our then three children. They're now 34, 25, and my baby turned 23 on Sunday, and we have a seven-year-old granddaughter that lives with us. Community work continued to be what I do. I co-founded a, a cultural association that teaches children mariachi music from the ages of five to eight to 17. My granddaughter, my granddaughter's in class right now. I think my husband's got her home now. I uh, was a soccer coach for 15 years, and I serve on the Public Administration Advisory Board for Cal State Northridge. It's what we enjoy doing. But I worked for six years with the Legal Women Voters of Los Angeles, and then most recently, before coming to the department, for five years working with the Pat Brown Institute at Cal State LA. It is in the latter two experiences that I was introduced to the neighborhood council system. So 11 years partnering and working with the neighborhood councils externally, not in the department. Very common to have at the league people just like you that would be calling, asking for advice on elections, on parliamentary procedures, or interested in just partnering with the league to host, co-host candidate forums or issue forums. At the Pat Brown Institute, I co-produced with Dr. Raphael Sonnenschein his signature civic youth program, the version of it that was designed specifically for neighborhood councils. NC, C, Civic U 1.0 and 2.0. But in each of those circumstances, particularly with the League, these were neighborhood councils that were interested in providing the public unbiased and objective information about issues, about individuals seeking to be elected to the City Council, always with the intent of trying to provide a balanced form for people. There was one coalition of neighborhood councils where we did a candidate debate, and Studio City was one of those. I just don't remember what year it was, since it was so many years ago. Um, but it was that foundation for me that allowed me to have something to contribute in this position here. So as part of the listening tour, I'm sharing my four initial goals, the goals that I presented to the mayor 
cabinet meeting where all his general managers meet. He meets with them once a week. And I'm going to share those with you. The first goal, in, uh, initial goal that I have, is to strengthen the department's position as a resource for you, for communities and for, for elected officers. But in terms of being a support for you, this is where we have an opportunity and should be partnering with you to help you navigate the system, navigate the city attorney's office, the city clerk's office, so that you can focus on the kinds of things that, are, that you would like to advance for your neighborhood councils. We want to strengthen, as, as a second goal, the department's relationship with neighborhood councils. There are some neighborhood councils that have a very, very strong and very good relationship with the department. There are other neighborhood councils where their relationship with the department is not what we would all like it to be. In order for us to advance our mission, we have to have a healthy relationship with the neighborhood councils. The third goal is to improve the neighborhood councils engagement and advocacy approaches. We can be thought partners with you around the strategies that you are considering related to the advocacy positions that you're taking or the things you want to do to serve the community. We might have some information that could be helpful as you think through the approaches you want to take and perhaps to share some options uh, as you consider what you want to do moving forward. We can be thought partners. With you. We don't take position on issues and we don't endorse candidates, but we can still be thought partners with you. The fourth goal is to improve City Hall's relationship with neighborhood councils. The neighborhood councils at times perceive themselves as being disconnected from City Hall, or in some cases, they perceive themselves as being unwelcome at City Hall. We should be assisting departments in the way in which they communicate with neighborhood councils and with communities. We can give assistance to them as it relates to what kind of messaging they have. Maybe they need a different approach to be able to talk with the community and the neighborhood councils. We can assist them in making those presentations, sharing information, and giving them some advice about, uh, you may not want to go down that road. Here's what the response might be from the community. And if they choose to do that, then they do it with their eyes open. It could be that we get information from neighborhood councils that we can then share with departments to say, this might be another way to approach it that would be better received. So we should be in a position to provide that kind of support. There's a partner community-based organization with us, the Advancement Project in, in Los Angeles, very, very, very famous uh, community-based organization that completed a survey that looked at civic engagement of uh, residents in Los Angeles and particularly populations that aren't as engaged as other populations. And one of the factors that they identified amongst many related to challenges that people have relating to City Hall are structural barriers. We can work with the department to try to remove and limit some of those structural barriers. I've had a tremendously positive experience interacting with neighborhood councils since I've been here. I am very happy to be here as your general manager and, uh, and look forward to more opportunities to work with you in the future. If you would like, Mr. Chairman, I'm perfectly willing to, to respond to questions. Thank you very much for allowing me to be here. Thank you. And uh, Eric, public comment? Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Ultron. That's a very nice presentation. We're welcome. It's a, thank you. It's a big job, and uh, there's 99 of them, so you have a lot of full play. i just say one thing, um, which if you're considering things that could fit inside those four goals, one um, thing that I've been uh, passionate about is the, the possibility of outreach, neighborhood councils serving as outreach. And we have a very new and good chair working now. But what I'm trying to say is, is that there is information from the city that frequently comes in the form of land use or in, uh, transportation or other aspects of what's happening in our local community. And I've always felt that the Neighborhood Council should be an advocate for bringing that information widely to the community. And what you find sometimes is a different approach, which is more strategic. And I think that, you know, I'm not speaking about any particular issue, but it does come up where some people don't feel informed. I mean, you can imagine if you're doing something that people may not want, you know, let's not tell too many people is the clumsy pawing at the idea. But I do think that the neighborhood councils, even if we're for something or against something, we should really be diligent 
about sharing. So I've thought of something called the, you know, and I haven't written them, but we can think about it, the Outreach Bill of Rights. Because I really do feel that communities have a right to know what the city's up to. Because most of it's good and supportive of what we're trying to do, fixing the roads, fixing the, and some of it is, you know, con conflictual. But regardless, I feel that people should have that information. So thank you and welcome once again. Thank you very much. Great. We're going to start uh, board comments with Rick. Anybody on the board have any comments? Yeah. Uh, yeah, why wasn't there uh, a mandatory training for neighborhood council, especially for new board members? I spent, I called the office so many times, uh, and it was, I didn't get any response. We we're all confused what was going on. Uh, and I think every single one on the board now who has not been a past board member was frustrated. And we showed up for the first meeting having absolutely no idea what was going on. I mean, luckily, Brian did an amazing job, but I did reach out to, to give some lunch and, and also to other members at times. So. It was a little bit frustrating. Um, <clears throat> that shouldn't happen. And uh, I'm happy that you're sharing that with me because I would not have expected that to be the experience. There are mandatory trainings for all board members, three specifically. So there should have been some way, uh, certainly during the candidacy process, where it was made known to candidates that there were certain obligations of board members and I'll, I'll be happy to take a look at that. And, uh, I mean, we never received any communication nor um, even after we reached out to, I know many members did, so. Okay, I'm um, happy to check into that. Thank you very much. Yeah, and you're not, you're not talking, because I attended Civics U, but that's not specific to me. That's not a mandatory training. Or, okay. no. There are three basic ones that all board members are required to take, particularly if you're planning to vote. Well, we all did the certain. online courses, but that's not, that doesn't that's tell you how to run a neighborhood council or how to participate in committees. I can also answer part of Lisa. Okay. And I, I don't want to you know, create a rift or anything, but our current bylaws state that um, the person who's in charge of training the new board members would have been the president at the time that they were elected. Um, so okay. at, at the risk of, you know, whatever, I'm just saying that that's what it was. Um, I, I just have a quick comment real quick. I just want to thank you for coming. I know you got a lot of neighborhood councils to go to. I just uh, thank you for making ours uh, one year first. So thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, in the, uh, down the road here. Yes, Richard. Uh, Griffin, on what Brian said, because I was going to make the same thing. We do have a internal handover process, but in 2016, that was short-circuited by the city clerk's office because they seated the board immediately. And the new incoming board could not meet without breaking the Brown Act. And it's been downhill ever since. So the city needs to figure out a way in, at your level and with the city clerk's office, how there can be a break between certification of election, seating of new boards, and the training that would be very helpful for everybody can be done. The training you're referring to is the online training, correct? Yeah. It's not, That's there's, what not, I was yeah. well, okay, there's, there's not any in-person uh, mandatory training. Not mandatory. Not mandatory, but, but you do offer Correct, correct. So there, there and, and I think the chairman is right that we, to some degree, defer to the way in which the NC would like to try to have that evolve. And so, uh, but they are available. And I, I think, regardless of how a particular NC chooses to um, onboard their new board members, I, I the message I'm getting is there might be some more that we need to do to make sure that people know what their options are so that you can make some choices based on everybody has different experiences. And even if they help Proctor or RHA, uh, the group, with yeah. the president as the leader or the sure. past president as the leader, Sure, sure. But thank you very much. Oh, no, That's a big deal. Thank I you. Know, I was going to point out also that your online trading portal is at best pludgy and buggy. And it might be better to redo it in something a little more stable, a little less intrusive software-wise than Google Chrome. <clears throat> well, thank you very much. I do appreciate it. I think that's all the questions we have. Uh, thank, thank, you. Uh, thank you. Brian, can I make it super fast? Yes, sorry. <clears throat> uh, hi, thank you for coming. Um, what I will say <coughs> is a thank you, actually. I, I want to acknowledge Gibson because I have found him actually to be incredibly responsive. Uh, I even I was uh, pushing myself not to call him on his cell phone uh, because when I had met with him, he said, here's my cell phone number, um, you can call me anytime. And I hated being that guy. Uh, and although I got a voicemail, he returned my call, I want to say it was within 15 minutes. Um, 
And so, since so at least my experience since being seated, um, I have found him to be very professional, very responsive. He's taken verbal barbs from people and remained calm, you know, cool and calm and collected. Um, so I, I appreciate the work that he continues to give to us and other neighbor councils. Thank you. I will second that if I may. Second. Um, Gibson has made himself readily available to me. Um, anytime I send an email or he's shared his personal phone number, uh, as well as Semi Park. Uh, they're both very, very open and uh, willing to answer any questions or solve any problems that I want to be able to discuss with them. So I appreciate that. Thank and, you. I, and I appreciate you coming on board because. It has been tough um, with the past president, so it's nice to have someone who's ready to just take us on. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very appreciate much. It. Please come so back. I'm going to another yes. instance, so excuse me, and yeah. I really appreciate the pizza. It's my favorite food. Of course, of course. <laughs> Thank you. It's one of many services we provide here. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, moving on to number five, uh, I finally remembered to put it on the agenda of the bank report. Uh, Richard Adams. Okay, what about the Ventura Queen of Boulevard? Uh, that's number six. Oh, me and Virgin thing. Right. Oh, I thought I had a different agenda. I just forgot the ones from the agenda. The bank report is after. Okay. Uh, moving on to number five, the Ventura Cahuenga Boulevard Corridor Specific Plan Amendment Process and Informational Updates. Hello, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, somebody, you think, Eric, you asked for updates from the planning department, and here we are, ask and you shall receive. Um, my name is Christine Sacanera. I am the senior city planner from the city of Los Angeles. Um, and I handle the Southwest Valley. Um, actually, I handle the whole West Valley, but right now we're doing the Southwest Valley Community Plan Updates, and also we're working on something really exciting, which is what I'm coming here to talk to you about. That is the Ventura Cahuenga Boulevard Specific Plan. Um, have you guys heard of it? I'm sure. Yes. Anybody yes. drive on Ventura? It's like one of the most beautiful streets in um, the city. Uh, so what I will present today is I'm gonna talk about the mission of like what we wanna do with the community plan. I'm going to give you a background of how that community plan came to be. And I'm sorry, I'm saying a community plan, I'm always saying community plan. I mean a specific plan. Um, how that specific plan came to be, uh, the purpose and scope of the changes that we're going to make, the amendment that we're going to make, and then the outreach and timeline schedule for that uh, project. So um, today what I wanted to do is provide a brief background and clarify the purpose, scope, and timeline. Um, the City Council first adopted the specific plan in 1991 um, to ensure that the 17-mile corridor remains viable in, as the San Fernando's premier commercial corridor. Um, just some you know, issues about the geography, or not issues, but just to explain about it, it is 17 miles long um, from the Arroyo Calabasas, where Arroyo Calabasas intersects with Ventura Boulevard in Woodland Hills to a few blocks east of where Barham Boulevard intersects with Coenga Boulevard in Hollywood Hills. Um, so it's about 1,200 square feet of area of acres uh, and 4,300 parcels, individual parcels. Um, the jurisdiction, we have about six neighborhood councils, so because it's so long, it crosses six neighborhood councils, four council districts, and three community plan areas with active programs going on today. Um, we have existing regulations. Um, the regulations in a specific plan, just in case you don't know what a specific plan is or for people in the audience, um, they're extra regulations on top of the municipal code. So we have the general regulations in the code, uh, and then on top of that we have extra um, regulations on signage, on um, uh, height, floor area ratio, lot coverage, parking, landscaping, fees, all on top and they supersede the, the municipal code. So anything that it says in there is in any different, it goes above it. If it's not mentioned in the specific plan, then you revert back to the municipal code. Um, and I have, I'm also joined with Lucy who worked very, um, you know, worked with the Ventura specific plan and can explain any issues like specific regulations that you want to hear about. She's our girl, we can talk to her. Uh, so purpose and scope. Um, the specific plan amendment's purpose is to modernize existing regulations and streamline existing processes. Uh, substantive, substantive 
changes are not included in this amendment. So um, usually for the city of Los Angeles, we like to make things difficult, it seems like. That's what everybody tells us. Um, but in this case, we're trying to take a really difficult plan um, and make it easier to understand without changing the regulations within it. We think the regulations are very important. They're something that have been put in there through years and years of, of study. Uh, but we want to make it more um, understandable and easier for small businesses, mom and pops, to exist. Um, and you know, as it is today, it's it's very difficult because we have you know somebody who wants to get a sign, for example, or paint their door, has to come into the planning department, pay a seventeen hundred dollar fee or seven hundred dollar fee, apply for a permit, wait for months, maybe you know six months or more, um, finally get the permit. And it's not because we're not you know doing it fast enough. It's because there's so many changes, especially with smaller businesses. A lot of changes are happening, like signage upgrades, all of that. So we want to simplify signage regulations. Take them, um, you know, there are regulations there that say how big your sign should be, how bright, how all of these, um, you know, steps. Instead of us actually taking it in and giving a case, you know, writing a determination, sending that out, mailing it, all of that stuff, we can issue a determination right over the counter. So mom and pops don't have to wait anymore. Um, the second thing we want to do is um, has anyone heard about Recode that we're going through? Um, so Recode is, and we're not supposed to call it Recode anymore, but that's what we've been calling it for five years. So <laughs> I'll start off by calling it that. Um, Recode is the new, uh, uh, new and improved municipal code. Uh, essentially what we're going to do with Recode is take all our existing zones and translate them into these new zones. The new zones will be exactly the same in you know, capacity. Uh, and the only difference is every single regulation in that if that's required or you know any special plans will be listed right into the zone stream. Um, so people who buy property and say like I didn't know I was in a specific plan, I didn't know I had a height limit, I didn't. All of those things will be listed in your zoning, um, so that you can look at it. You know, right in the beginning it's going to be a little bit difficult, but after a couple of years, I think people will be able to look at it and say. Oh, that's, that pro property has a specific plan and, and extra regulations in the height district. And so at least everything is out there in the open. Um, and that's what we want to do with these properties, is take them into the new zone um, classifications without changing the regulations. And then um, the last thing we want to do is there are impact fees that we collect for parking. Um, and those impact fees have a very narrow list of how we can spend that money. Um, as a result of that very narrow list, we have $7 million just waiting there, waiting to be spent, um, with, but we can't spend it on the things that actually matter. So we want to take that um, list and make it a little bit bigger so that we can add things that um, will improve pedestrian experience, will improve um, business in that area. Um, our outreach and timeline. So we are going, this is a two-year timeline. Um, so we're expecting to be complete in 2021. Probably in the beginning of next year, we will have outreach where we will come out and have our own meetings where we will invite all of you and everyone else from the public to come and give, them, give us their feedback. Um, we are going to go out to the businesses and try to out, have um, special outreach with them, neighborhood and residents, plan review boards, and um, as many people as we can get. We'll put it on our Facebook page, we'll send out and, because this is a specific plan amendment, at the time that we make any changes, um, a, an actual letter, an old-fashioned letter, which probably everybody will think is junk and leave it, <laughs> um, will come to their residence or their business, actually both, their residence and the business on the boulevard. Um, and everyone within 500 feet will also get one, inviting them to come to the public hearing. So hopefully that will be enough to get the word out, but please let people know. I'm here to answer questions about the plan or what changes we're going to make. And um, thank you so much for listening. Great. Uh, starting with uh, Erica. Sure. Thank you. And um, so, so this will happen over the next year or so. In, in the early part of 2020, there will be a reach out to get yes. people interested. But this is different than the one. This is only on Ventura Anymore from those two. 
So this is not the planning going along with the Moore Park, but it's a different planning group? Or is that also your group, um, a different set of yeah, it's, coordinates? Yeah, it's a different team. Okay, so that will also, it, do you know the timeline of that one as well? I'm not, I'm not sure. sure. Okay, well, yeah. I appreciate the comments and we'll watch for that. Isn't it? The $7 million could be used, as you say, for some, between that, those, you know, from Woodland Hills to here. So will it be, will it be a competition? So, you know, no, <laughs> so it's not that kind of, it's, okay. it's basically their parking impact fees that yeah. are collected. So we want to use them for that type of use. So either building parking structures or, and Lisa, who's on our PRB board, can explain a little bit more. Um, but um, using it for like alley improvements, which are not currently covered, um, street improvements, I think the only thing that's covered that's is that street fighting or um, there's like they I think that is covered but that's like the opposite thing that you want to do with a boulevard where you want people to walk and stuff you know so right. uh, so I think we want to widen it to include like alley improvements parking structures um, you know just cool. kind of preventing the impacts of parking in that area also, isn't Lisa Sarkin on it as well? You have another yeah. member, so two of the... Lisa, yeah, Lisa and Lisa. Lisa. Uh, you can open up to the board. Any questions? What currently, uh, besides street widening, may the parking impact fees uh, on to be used on? Um, we used them for the sidewalks. We just filled how many, how many sidewalks? We just... The 12 years that you worked on the sidewalks. 15 years to get the sidewalks. 15 done. years to get the sidewalks done. So we did 14 need, different locations. How much was the budget on that? Over yes. how many million? It was a 1.8 MBA. Right. So sidewalks, alleyways, winding. Well, the alleyways weren't included, so that's why we wanted to do right. it since we don't have any other circulation. Right. Is that, is that uh, the, uh, the sidewalks that are going to go out of the north end of Ventura between Colfax and Tahunga, is that going to be... Uh, uh, that's what the 1.8 million, that's what the money came out of that budget Excellent. to okay. pay for that. So we're still working on getting the meters in. All right, on the side of the yeah. All right, uh, we'll be down here. So all the, all the rezoning um, changes, are they summarized on the city plan website? Do you have like a specific? Yes, yeah. we will be doing that once we figure it out. Um, I think we, we're still working on creating the zones, um, but the regulations are available today. Obviously. And that will be compartmentalized into districts yeah. so you can easily check what's happening in your own yes. district. Yeah, no, we definitely will do that. And we'll be back here to um, bring you that kind of thing. Um, I forgot to mention, I do have two different things that I can hand out. I have um, an FAQ that I'm happy to hand out here um, to you guys and then also to be for anybody from the public. Um, I also have a neighborhood council um, sign-in sheet or a sign-in sheet for neighborhood council um, for anyone from the public who's interested in finding out more and want to be on our list so that we can send that information for whenever we have our meeting. So I will have um, both of these available for anyone who's interested. And I think you guys have questions. And I'll provide uh, monthly updates after the plan review board meeting, just to keep everyone informed. Because it is exciting, yeah. the yeah. specific plan mm -hmm. for Ventura Board. Yeah. Um, sure. We're all on it every single day, I'm sure. Yes. Um, so to have this informational meeting today is a great start to modernize yeah, I actually live on Ventura Boulevard. City plan is very important to me. I really don't want to see Studio City looking like downtown Encino or Woodland Hills, which I was at this early this week. Uh, two things that concern me: um, termination without review. They just go up to the to the that potentially leads to problems because you know unless the person who's Stamping it is well trained in specific plan. It has all the exact things there. Things are going to get approved that really shouldn't get approved, and then you got to try to get them down, and then it's a fuss and a lawsuit and everything else. So, well, the person who is doing it now will be doing that. That needs to be codified, so it's yeah. always a subject matter like, expert. Uh, office hours, and so instead of uh, doing it, okay. But as I said, yeah. there needs to be something concrete in the plan to make sure whoever's putting the stamp down knows what the rules say and not just, well, that looks good to me. Yeah. 
And the other thing is, is when can we see a review of the draft? I think you were, the paperwork in front of me says draft. Is that available yet, or are you still massaging? Um, what I was reading off of, those are just speaking points. <laughs> okay, but I saw yeah, some of your paperwork uh, had draft and overlay. Yeah, Okay. Just speaking points. This is what I said. Um, we will have a draft by probably mid mid next year, mid 2020. Um, time we start the outreach. Yeah, we're going to start the outreach early 2020, so January. Um, we were going to start the started this year, um, but yeah, at the end of the year, but I know that that's holiday season and all the shops they don't want to take time off, so I do that with us. So we're going to wait till the holidays are over, have start the meetings, and then um, come up with a draft midway midway through the year. And then once that draft is finalized, um, take that draft to council and hopefully do that by early 2021. Okay, your email address is christine.sapinar <coughs> at lecity.org. Okay, and don't forget to include the bids in the conversation. Oh, of course. I just say, if you can just please email board at studiocitymc.com. Or, or, that would be killer. Richard. Yeah, upon the effective date of the new package of ordinances, basically, about what percentage of existing parcels will now be in the category of non conforming use? Uh, Legal when they're built, but not today. So you're saying what percentage of existing parcels are built in the category of non conforming use? As of, no, no, as of the, when this takes effect. Oh, so the regulations don't change. So whoever is non-conforming today will continue to be non-conforming when this is... But anybody who is legal today will, will be there because they were there before, but you couldn't build the same thing again. No, you could still build the same thing. The regulations aren't going to change. We're just going to change the vehicle in which we give you the regulations. They're just going to simplify. Yeah. It's administrative changes. Uh, other things that's only changing, there's nothing in the community plan that is on the board. No, I just want to see if there's any area ratio changes or no. any of that nature that came in recently. No. Yeah, and if we were to make changes like that, um, it would take the form of the community plan. So we would look through the community plan update, which is going on right. at the same time, not the whole. Um, half of the quarter is within active <coughs> community plan. Um, but we don't foresee, I'm in charge of those too, we don't foresee any uh, dramatic changes to the, to the plan. I need to venture that point up over to the plan. Uh, but I do encourage you to still come, up, come to those meetings, which will also come to you about as well, um, just in case changes are. I don't want to promise you that nothing will change, but that the changes that would happen would happen through that process and not through this amendment process. Okay, so, so as far as I know, there won't be any changes in height setbacks or anything of that nature. No. Let's face it. And also, just so everybody knows, Christine is um, in working with Delia. So a lot of our emails will be coming from Delia Ariaga, right? Yes. And also, this has been worked on by the plan review board by our PRB committee for over four and a half years. So this isn't just being thrown out there um, for you guys to take a look at. It's been well thought out and uh, it's going to be really great. So with that, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank um, you for being here. Um, all right, I'm going to move on to number six, the bank report. Richard Adams. Yeah, you're all in luck. A couple things that I was going to talk about have been overtaken by events. Uh, first things first, we have a new East Valley Mayor's Rep. Her name is Caroline Menivar, Menib I believe. Uh, ex green but that's not a problem. Uh, I've got a business card on the scan and I'll email, email it to everybody. Uh, big, one of the two big deals on the agenda this month at Bank was the Mayor's Green New Deal. It's 80 pages, you can get it on the web. Uh, mandatory changes to changes in building codes, etc. Among other things, you're not going to be allowed to have gas stoves, heaters, and fireplaces anymore. They envision everybody driving electric vehicles taking public transit, and density is key. And I point out this problem with electric vehicles, they already have it in the UK. The more people get into electric vehicles, the less money they bring in fuel taxes, and then there's a whole other budget. 
So I don't think anybody in Sacramento or downtown has taken looked at that. Now, the guy admitted the whole plan would be expensive, but he wasn't, wouldn't even come out and say we're going to pay for it. One thing was the companies building the new buildings are going to pay for all these improved green, really expensive things, which of course means whoever's trying to move into the building later gets to pay higher rents. And, you know, housing is so affordable here already. Another fun tip is 100% recycling of sewage water, toilets they tap. In other words, they, train, they clean everything up in Hyperion, all the way to the solid waste, and then pump the water back someplace and put it in the ground. Um, they didn't get into details on that either. And the best part of the comment was this one gentleman who sat there, he apparently never heard Benjamin Franklin's concept, quote on the subject, he told us that we're in tense of meeting, that we're going to have to give up some more freeze to address climate change. Um, they planning mixer, November 14th, Carlos Cafe. I don't have, they're going to have panel discussions on various subjects with planning interests. They haven't got the list out yet. RSVP is required. If I see the, the, the list, I'll forward it to everybody so you can decide if you want to go. What's the date? November 14th, the day of the usual bank meeting, but it's here at CBS. Um, the lady was talking about city planning changes. They're making changes in our building codes and the plan, the plan for the area. I think there's still time for the board to weigh in on that, and we have not. Um, this was what took, what took the most time in the evening. The Metro wants to build a bus line through the North Valley starting at uh, the uh, NoHo Red Line Station. And they're basically talking about taking two lanes of traffic out of some major east-west corridors and some north-south corridors to get the buses all the way out to Chatsworth. And the NCs, Bob Hertzberg wanted Bank to sign a letter of, oh, we think this is great. A lot of the board, a lot of the neighbor councils left after Raquel left, and there's people I believe because their neighborhoods went on fire. But the gist of everybody whose neighbor council was in the area was this, this is a taking that will destroy traffic circulation in their neighborhoods and overcrowded streets that are already overcrowded. Uh, bank voted to send a letter asking that more hearings be held to include alternate routes, and that ER, EIRs be conducted on all of them as well. So with the effect on things like rural Canyon and stuff, maybe our transportation maybe needs to look at that as well. And Gold Line is going to be converted to rail over the next few years. They'll take a section, route the buses around on a detour, and put in rails. And what they're going to do with the sections that have rails on them once they're, you know, rail, I don't know if the buses will be able to use them. But that's going to do fun things for our local traffic. So Since you need email out on the orange line or the Yeah, the orange line. Oh, I said Gold Line and then Orange Line. I'm only a little dyslexic. It's the same color. <laughs> I sent you an email earlier today about AD 1560. It directly relates to things like the, the, the North Valley Transit, where it's dedicated bus lanes, and you only need one stop in your neighborhood for, which it was that horrible bill that went through, not SB 50, but the other one just like it. Okay, well, they passed it last year, and everything went a half mile of route like that. No secret review, they could build almost anything the way they want. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we got a bunch of council files. One here submitted committee, it's city administrative officer report relative to the sidewalk and parking vending fee study. Not all the council file numbers, if anybody's interested. City attorney report dated September 17, 2019, relative to draft ordinance amending the LA Municipal Code restrict campaign contributions and fundraising by developers and solicitation disclosure of behested payments by city elected officials. Uh, these are the rest of these, and those are previous things, but have had movement on them. Uh, motion by Coretz and Martinez relative to request of the city attorney to prepare and present an ordinance establishing the Climate Emergency Commission and related actions as detailed for the motion. Um, Martinez Rodriguez, relative to directing the Bureau of Sanitation to report with recommendations on launching a oh, pilot sign in, in 86, or Council District 6. We might want to think about that with all the stuff that gets done in our streets. Um, Ferro Krikorian, relative to instructing the Department of Recreation and Parks to conduct community stakeholder meetings in each Council District with all park users to solicit feedback uh, to ensure city parks are safe to be manageable and accessible by everyone, and that the RAPs report to council with means to results of these public meetings and offer recommendations on how to manage the impacts of homelessness in city parks. Um, Rodriguez Bloomfield, 
Loads of constructing Office of Finance and the Assistance of the City Administrative Officer to report on the business tax rate for restaurants in the city, including the various sizes and categories of restaurants, and the fiscal impact of reducing or eliminating gross receipt tax for, tax for new and existing restaurants. This one, Basquiano, Bonin, et al. City, including its 2019-20 state legislative program, a position on action by Governor Newsom to declare a state of emergency on homelessness in the state of California. Only two more folks. The mayor's report, dated 20, 30 September, rose to the appointment of Joanne D'Antonio to Council District 2, alternate for community force advisory. And lastly, this one's for Corinne and Caress, and I was talking to Jessica about. Uh, ask the city attorney to prepare and present ordinance that would attempt to amend the LA Municipal Code to expressly prohibit the use of digital applications and digital infrastructure to reroute vehicle traffic that is inconsistent with LA's official city street designations. For three and a half hours. Thank you very much. Public comment, sir. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, appreciate that. And I, you know, last time we talked about bank and government affairs, I'm happy to, you know, if some of those make sense, I'll be happy to have a meeting on the committee. There's one that came up uh, twice, which is the CD2, our district, and Krikorian, our council member, has set aside $80,000 um, in like a month or two ago for this neighborhood council and other neighborhood councils to theoretically match. So if we decide that you want to, you know, build a, you know, bridge or, or spend the $4,000 doing something on the river, they're, they are prepared to match those issues if they're under the category of you know, something they want to do. So I think chairs should be aware of that. It's a, it's a way of doubling your funding if you have a funding idea. So the chairs of the committees are the ones who typically lead that. You know, if you, if you think of a project, you know, whether it's doggy bags for, at the parks or any project, they will help, you know, double down on the money. So I think that's a good idea. So thanks for the report. Right. Right. All right, great. Thank you very much. All right, I'm going to move on to number seven, the budget committee. Patrick is not here. Um, just a quick update uh, for what he wants to do. Uh, he's going to send it to uh, the board an email. His uh, update was just basically going to just map out for, because the budget committee only meets when there is an application for something, um, just kind of outlining a better practice on how our committees can get funding motions to that committee and have them voted on at the appropriate time. So he'll send an email to that effect, but I wanted to just make sure the public also knew what that email was going to be. Um, instead of that thing, I'm going to sneak into Gibson. He's got a quick little comment that he wants to get into the room. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. I'm going to sneak in one more person also, just making a request. Uh, the, the LAUSD board member is here, the staff is here as well. Uh, the one I just speak real quick, but so the general manager had forgotten to mention one thing. So we are working diligently to use demographics information as well within our neighborhood councils. If everybody's okay, we uh, have demographic sheet with everybody's name on it. We also do have an online form if you feel more comfortable. If anybody would like to fill it out, I have it. If, uh, everybody's name. Um, the information in the demographic survey that we're conducting to our neighborhood councils will be, if it's a person who's a new board, new council, a new neighborhood council board member within the NC system, um, their gender, their age, their ethnicity, um, but also at the bottom we do have an option if somebody does not prefer to fill out the survey. The goal is to get our neighborhood councils to be diverse. We want to understand how our neighborhood councils look like. We want to make sure we have a good understanding using demographics information. Um, and we understand with a with the census coming up next year, um, that will that information will be available to everybody. In addition, we're also asking all our neighborhood council board members, if um, all our neighborhood councils, um, neighborhood councils, if they'd like to appoint two census liaisons, um, we are working with the mayor's office to ensure that communities do get counted in next year's uh, census. Um, so this means we also kind of try and leverage the neighborhood council system. So if um, we want to be able to um, help our neighborhood council board members identify community-based organizations where uh, folks can actually go participate in the census. Um, a large percentage of the census will be conducted online. 
um, this will be the first time that the, um, that the federal government is pursuing more of the online aspect of it. Um, and so our goal is to make sure that all communities do get a fair count. So we want to make sure that there are locations for everybody to conduct the surveys online. Um, they can do it at their personal home, and if they don't have access to an internet, internet access, we want to make sure that we can use leverage the library uh, or maybe a, a community organization that works within the community um, that helps us get people counted. Um, the strategy and the goal is to ensure that um, our aging population is well counted as well as all community members within um, our community. And so we are asking our neighborhood council board members, I mean, neighborhood councils to uh, appoint a liaison. They don't have to be a board member, they could just be a community member of Studio City to go participate in our meetings with the mayor's office. We want to uh, help train them to become the good, goodwill ambassador and goodwill ambassador program. So the strategy is if we can make sure that our neighborhood council board members have access to this information, uh, as the census is really six months away. Um, so we want to see if we can use the neighborhood council system and all board members to participate. So if you feel comfortable, please let me know. I will provide you with the, uh, the survey. Um, if, you've, if anybody wants one, I'll give it to you. We also do have a folder. I can, we'll just put it in. The goal is just we are collect. Uh, we just want to make sure that we understand um, our neighborhood councils more. Can you send me that link? I can disperse it. Sure. And if anybody wants a physical copy, let me know. Okay. Great. Yes, please. So what you have is just a survey to be completed. It's not information that has already been gathered. No, to be completed. So we There's have two sent things going on here, right? This is a demographic for the neighborhood councils and then also the census yes. you're talking about. Yes, so there are two things that we kind of combine. Volunteer participation so to the, provide personal information. So, so the first one is a general survey. Um, oh, the first point is there's a survey we are Within the neighborhood, from the department, we are conducting surveys uh, of how our neighborhood councils look like, and then the second, this um, we are going to be leveraging, um, not leveraging, but we're helping to see if our neighborhood council board members can be partners within the census system. As the count will be starting April first next year, it's going to be a lot of it. Is, the main emphasis will be online. Um, we're, they're trying to focus everybody to do it online, um, so we want to make sure that the locations, if people don't have a if they don't have an internet access or they need help to fill it out, we want to be able to use our neighborhood council board members who know maybe community-based organizations that can help um, help stakeholders fill out these forms. We want to make sure if people know these organizations may need grant money, so they'll also be funding that will be allocated uh, for outreach for the, for the census. Okay, one more question of clarification. No, no. This is not agenda, so I don't want to do too many no. uh, back to yes. questions. Just, but. just a clarification on the survey yes. for demographics yes. for the board, right? Yes. This information would be summarized to to create the makeup of uh, board members and Studio City represent ages from this to this, mm -hmm. ethnicities from this, this, and this area. Okay, great. Yeah, so it's definitely just very general information. Um, so if anybody feels comfortable, is that, um, that yes. going to be online or just internal use if done? Uh, it's, we it would be more internal use. So it may be online. Okay. Yes. Great. Thank you. All right. Moving on to cultural. Okay. Nobody wants one. Great. Uh, we move on to number eight, the cultural affairs update by Richard. Eber. Okay. Three things coming up on on uh, Halloween night. We are showing Coco, which is technically about deity and penetrage. So it's day of the dead rather than Halloween, but same idea. You know, um, good movie. We're playing at the library, adding a few snacks, and I think it'll be a lot of fun. Then on November 9th, we have a seminar also at the library on film made in Studio City. We still have the presentation, then a clip reel, and then finally, um, um, never give a sucker even a break, which is a double WC field film. And it, that'll be fun. Okay, and then uh, the, the biggest thing I'm talking about, of course, is on all your desks, you'll find the thing about the luminaria. We need people to choose whatever task they wish to do. Everybody's supposed to be involved. The question is how you want to be involved. And you'll see on the list basically the variety of things. None of them are particularly stressful. Um, 
hope to get at least 20 kids from our website to do some of the real work on Saturday. And we need some help all from supervising. Then on Sunday when it happens, so be your Sunday best or Saturday best or whatever best, you know, and meet the stakeholders, see the different shows. We still have to have people dealing with the um, inside kids to be drawing pictures uh, created by um, the Zeno Santa Fernanda Valley. And we have all the pens and all the anchors to fill it in. We also need to have somebody, we, have not, we don't have anybody yet, we need somebody to read stories <coughs> that are applicable to 1847, if possible, or around the area, over this era, you know, in the library, because the librarian person couldn't do it this year, so we need somebody to have a decent voice to read to uh, kids. It's not particularly stranding years, but it's something that should be done to tie it together with, again, Kevin and Cueca, uh, 1847, when the whole idea of see the shining sea, sometimes it's going to be came true. January 13th, 1847. And so, when you decide what you'd like to do, please inform me. You can email me, send me a copy of this, hand it to me, whatever you want. We just need a staffing to make it all work. And again, this is a neighborhood council event. It's not designed to be a cultural affairs event. It's everybody's involved, and some of you that elected you, I want to talk to you. You never know. Thank you. Great. Public comment. Thank you. I'll, I'll be happy to participate in the Minario as I do every year. I just want to mention that the newspaper, LA Times, had a big story about Studio City uh, on Saturday. It was about the, the sort of a cultural store aspect about the architecture. I don't know, I think it was posted on Facebook, but it was very impressive. You know, you had the Laurelwood Apartments designed by Schindler and several others, the Palace House, which is up in the hills. And the way the author, Lisa Boone, uh, described it was you could drive through and visit these cool pieces of architecture in Studio City. And I just would reiterate, Richard, that as a cultural affairs committee, you know, if, if we as a if the Cultural Affairs Committee wants to spearhead that kind of a thing where we, you know, either get residents to make their house available or something like that, it would be a great, you know, it is a very rich aspect to Studio City, some of these older homes that have architectural value. And that might bring a, a new constituency to what we do. You know, it could be a weekend event, but I don't know. I throw it out there. If you like it, feel free to nibble. Thank you. Thank you. Any more comments for the, excuse me. Any more comments for the uh, committee? Richard, the, the library event with the, the film clips and then never give us up to even break? Uh, yeah, yeah. Just, just on, on November 9th. November 9th. Uh, the presentation is done by Mary Mallory, formerly archivist for the Academy, so the she's live film. Um, and she's doing a presentation, PowerPoint. Then there's a clip reel of stuff shot at the city, and then all of Never Give a Break. Uh, so we need a break, and they'll be, it'll be fun. The Halloween event is self-explanatory. We're trying to give them some snacks, but not overlap with the trick-or-treating. They're probably going to do as soon as they leave us. We don't know. Any other, please raise your hand, or just make me aware that you want to come think. I was just wondering, so I choose what I want to do and email it to your email, how, how we assign the role. How just how choose what you want to do. And give me a piece of paper. Or you can call me, or you can email me. I need a very good see you can see. Any way you want, basically, so I can kind of fill in the gaps, so I can focus on the stuff which is not filled. Um, and by, by for the record, the Halloween one is at 5 30, and the um, uh, films of New York City starts at 3 o'clock. Anybody else public comment or board comment? So can I just say one yeah. thing about the Luminaria? Um, so we've been doing this every year, right? And every year I say we should just get really organized. And we really should. Like he said, it is a neighborhood council event. So we all have to participate. Um, so we 
all have to participate. You have to just choose what it is that you want to do, and hopefully, some way, somehow, we have a good list going on so that everyone is assigned to be there. It is December seventh and eighth, or the event is on the eighth, right? Yes, that's on right. On a Sunday. Yes. Yeah, and then we have to get together on the Saturday to set up. Yeah, and at the same time, uh, 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 Barry Johnson will be cleaning out the kitchen thoroughly, and of course, it ends up prettier. That's his task to do, right? Yeah, but he'll have a lot of jobs, like setting the bags out, with our <laughs> bags, moving the tables, setting up chairs, and stuff of that nature. Nothing all that rigorous, but it's got to be done. We just need to get organized. Yeah. And then it's the very the rigorous. Clock, hey, take it all down. You have to be ready for it. And ready. if you can, like, grab your kids, your friends, <laughs> their friends. Yes, Richard. Yeah, if you don't have any kids or friends, you're lucky. Anyway, um, this just occurred to me. And Ollie has a lot of the information. The bid is doing a, what, a winter festival? Winter? The day yeah. before, it's uh, from Carpenter up to, I believe, Whitsett. They're doing a holiday stroll in Washington. Yeah. And uh, Vicki said we could have a booth. She and I are working out the details of what's required to get the booth, but we're going to need NC bodies to be there. Great. Make sure that. And that, that's a good way to drive people to get to Luminary. Also, on December 1st, we'd like to hand out parking passes at the farmer's market. Which on one side is talks about the luminaria, and the other side is the parking pass. Last board comment. I'd like to also point out that when you um, have your resources in two different places, it divides the manpower that you'll have at each. And as we have heard echo, the setup for the luminaria is quite yeah, well, vigorous. The bid event is late in the afternoon, and luminaria should be done by then. Oh, great. So we'll get a time schedule from someone in charge. Yeah, we, we'll work this thank out. You. I'll find it. We'll also work this out on the board. But yeah, thank you. I just want to make sure you're here. Right. Also, the cosmetic office is involved, you know, to make it a little easier for us to try to lower the rent. Great. Okay. Cool. Thank you very much. All right. I'm going to move on to number nine, the outreach committee update. I'll discuss the last. Are you making any other you can make the update. Oh. Or if you want. Sure. Um, if so I know what I, the update is. What? If I if, if right to assume what the update is. Yes. Okay. Um, so um, last meeting, the committee chair provided a welcome and thanked members for their dedication and contributions. And as a group, we discussed it. We discussed. <laughs> not discussed it. We discussed building and continuing to build outreach off of what people already enjoy doing. Now the process of the other announcement is Richard Adams will actually be taking over the chair of the outreach committee. He understands how to do the administrative pieces and, and that for me has been, a, it's very difficult to manage and figure out how to do that stuff because there's not like a, a manual to really follow. Although his lead, I will be there, I will be supporting, I will be um, advising when needed um, and allowing my background to support the Studio City Neighborhood Council. Number two, public comments on non-agenda items that got included. Can you all hear me? Okay. A meeting on Yom, Kippur, on Yom Kippur was considered insensitive and as chair I needed to take ownership because we did meet on Yom Kippur. There were reasons but it was suggested that board committees find a way to check conflicting dates so as not to conflict with holidays, Shabbat, etc. Scheduling with inclusivity in mind is a task that obviously my um, outreach does want to be especially mindful of, but wanted to share that also in case that comes up for others. Maybe there's a larger discussion to be had about this, how to manage it as a whole. We talked about possible remedies. Um, so far, I've added the recognition of major holidays to Facebook, the ones that it would let me, because Facebook had huge changes in this last week. Other than the Jewish holidays, which Randy's actually going to be adding, um, we were wondering, because we want to recognize, outreach wants to recognize people, their celebrations, their diversity, the social inclusion of it. Um, regarding meetings and such, not sure if this would um, be possible, but maybe one of the solutions is to add it to the 2020 calendar 
so that all the public sees what's up. And then when we're scheduling, we also see if we're starting to conflict on something way before possibly that happens. Um, that said, just planting a seed, maybe a volunteer would like to start to compile a list so that those might be able to get programmed in if, if the president agrees that that would be something good and the board agrees. Um, public comment also commented on the logo not being updated on the public comment cards. That has been fixed and today we have an updated logo comment card. The phone system came up on public comment for outreach. The phone system leads to the ability for stakeholders to communicate with the board. And we had Peter Cole private present at the meeting. He reminded that there may have been something approved prior to remedy whatever's going on with the phone situation. At this time, the recording is John Walker's voice, which is a past president from the past. So I don't, we don't know if there's access or what's going on, but as outreach, we felt that that was something that we should probably look at and address because that is a bridge between stakeholders and the board. Um, outreach would like advisement from the president or vice president to get some clarity on how to approach. There's two options to possibly go to that last system that Peter Cole spoke of, or um, Richard had suggested contacting the CBS representative to see if possibly there's a way to kind of reset and revamp that. Um, Richard Niederberg requested greeters for the following events, in addition to his luminaria, which he just spoke of. On Halloween, October 31st, a greeter is needed to, for approximately mm, 5 to 5.30. If anyone's around or would like to do that, please feel free to contact Richard. We don't know if we'll have the iPad to check people in and get their emails and such yet. But it's always nice to have the graciousness of a greeter if anyone would like to do that. The, um, Somebody's got a garden to cook Yes. And the outreach committee at this time did not have a volunteer, so I want to open that up to the boards, people in the audience. Like, it's just nice to have people there welcoming people. Um, on Saturday, November 9th, also a greeter is needed for the other library event, um, probably from around 2.30 to 3. Of course, you can stay for the movie shot in Studio City with Mary Mallory um, and the, the movie. Uh, Luminaria, Richard just spoke about. For, you know, for any of us here, they could use support. And whether you show up at 2.30 to help with the greeting and, and passing things out or any time between there, um, anyone who wants to check in with Richard for support and being a part of outreach even, I'm not looking behind me, but this is for the audience too because we're all a part of Studio City. Um, about recording and posting board meetings, which was an item. Randy Freed and Peter Cole are working out the details about streaming these meetings live and upload it or uploading them after. Either way, the board meetings will become more accessible soon to those who cannot attend. And uh, we can announce that at some point when that all works out and, and, and those are able to be shared. Mission statement. As a group, all who attended the outreach meeting participated in creating the mission statement for outreach committee, and it was lovely. It was a fuller group. There were non-members there, but everybody had a voice about what outreach meant to them and to the Studio City Board. So with that said, we hope that you all agree. <laughs> um, the statement is, the mission of the Studio City Neighborhood Council Outreach Committee is to increase stakeholder involvement in an awareness of issues affecting the Studio City Neighborhood Council and the greater Studio City area by sharing information about meetings, events, and issues directly with the public, connecting stakeholders to the board and city public officials, leveraging social media, increasing, public, uh, increasing community partnerships and connections in Studio City and neighboring areas. About the broader mission statement, we had a bit of confusion. There was initially some question about which mission statement we were actually working on, which led to attendees bringing up that they would like to eventually discuss updating and clarifying the broader Studio City Neighborhood Council mission statement. At the time, the chair was uncertain if that would fall into outreach committee's jurisdiction or another committee, so that it if someone can advise on that, the outreach committee would, would like to know if they would like that or, or not. Studio City Neighborhood Council t-shirts and volunteer buttons. Thank you to Adam Summers, who has attained board and chair sizes for the t-shirts, and has agreed to handling the main order from the t-shirt company. So when they arrive, Adam will have facilitated that. Richard, um, wait, where's that? Oh. 
To honor size diversity and inclusivity, there will be an array of sizes, such as some double and triple larges will be included in the order so that nobody shows up and doesn't have a shirt to wear no matter what size they are, okay? Um, Richard, since your events are a first luminaria and the library events, please keep in touch with Adam about the shirt arrival, what's going on with that. If we could, I think it would be nice for people to be identifiable <coughs> with the shirts at any of the outreach, or at any of the meetings, but that will all depend on when things arrive. Um, thank you also to Adam. Oh, and we have extra shirts if there are extra staff that wants to participate. Thank you also to Adam for having agreed to manage the purchase of the iPad for outreach's use. The logistics and the responsibility of the iPad that will need to be work at, worked out to find a flow and an accountability, but we did learn that right now it can probably live with the computer that's kept here um, for the library meeting. So at least that's where the iPad, once it gets gotten, can live potentially. Um, Richard Adams investigated volunteer buttons so that the public knows who to approach at events, and it's very cool. He found three inch buttons with the logo and the space to say how my name is. So it's really a nice way to include, and then the volunteer can take it home and they have something to actually like keep of the event. Thank you also to Richard Adams for his research on the official board member badges so that guests and the public can identify board members by name. It's nice for outreach, and anytime any of us interface with the public, we are technically doing outreach. So it'll be lovely when you all have your city logos and your board badges, and hopefully that feels good. So thank you, Richard, for doing all that work. Nice! Fantastic! See that classy, man? Yep. And they're what? Seven bucks each? Six dollars yeah. each? Oh, and the volunteer yeah. bottom buttons, you're all seated. But, 47 um, cents each for 100. I'm sorry to uh, interrupt Richard, but this has the lo old logo. That's the old logo. No, we're going to update home one. All right, wait, here's the deal. The company is on the back of that badge. Right. I contacted them. Okay. The neighborhood council, yes, 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 has an account, but it's closed because. Hold on. Let's bring it back to Okay. Hold on. Um, we will, Richard and I will work together, and he is phenomenal at doing this research. Everything will be updated. It will be new logos. If you haven't noticed, new logos are the pet peeve. If I see the old ones, like your sign in, your comment cards to matter, it's like, ah, go fly in the new one. So um, we'll continue fixing those things, but Richard's been amazing at doing the research, and he, when you get them and you feel good in them, it is a thank you to him. Um, what? Send beer. There you go. Face-to-face -face interactions. It was really neat. When we were exploring what people would like to do on outreach, we discovered that Raduka Kaplan and Joseph Tichi, is it Tichi or Tiki? How do you say it? Let's say Tichi. Great, thank you. <laughs> so Joseph and Raduka actually like to do face-to-face -face meetings. So Joseph extended, he's going to do three meetings a month. Um, Studio City Residents Association will be one, and he's picking another neighborhood council. But to be able to represent at a Studio City Neighborhood Council, not speaking for, which we talked about the rules of not speaking for Studio City Neighborhood Council, um, but just having the presence there so that people see, see our faces more. Um, Raduka expressed interest in inter interfacing with the schools to possibly attain volunteers. Introduced the uh, Studio City Neighborhood Council if the if the school isn't aware, maybe round up some volunteers. But Raduka, the Raduka's passion lead led more to that. Um, so it's really fun just to see what people are already doing, already interested in, and allow that to just add on to the outreach. Um, both will report back next meeting. Pictures. Raduka and Joseph were both encouraged to get a picture while at the meeting. And this actually goes for all of you. If you're out mixing in the public, if you're at meetings, if you're hiking with Krikori, uh, Council Member Krikorian, any time that you're out there, please feel free. If, if it's not uncomfortable for you, take a picture. Email it to me. I'm still doing the Facebook and the outreach that in those social media ways. I'm happy to post it because then we're sharing with the community that we're out and we're active in the community. Um, my email is aspotsdelazer at studiocitync.org, just like all of yours, but please, the only thing I need is a little bit of a blurb to know what it's from. Um, so there we go. Adam volunteered next meeting to have created a one page for review, and this is more for outreach purposes. Now, it's nice when we introduce ourselves, like, 
if we, we even talked about doing maybe a door-to-door -door type of outreach at some point with outreach just to kind of say hello in the, our own community. Adam thought of this one page, smaller one page, and then Peter Cole thought of, there's a program where you can get this kind of scanny thing and you just scan it and then they type in their email address and it goes straight into our um, chip, mail chip. So there's a lot to potentially be explored. Um, but Adam, thank you for whatever work you do on that and for bringing in the model until hopefully we get it to a point where that serves everyone and can communicate what, what SCNC is, if you like to communicate in that way. Um, let's see, we get, to look, we get to look at both of those items next meeting. Um, and on the door-to-door, -door, obviously nothing is planned, but just planting seeds because it's a great way to meet who our actual neighbors are. And when it's your faces, you're so much more approachable than just even sitting here. I Facebooked you guys tonight just sitting at the tables. But, um, so, website. Your Studio City Neighborhood Council website has almost been completed. It's as far as it can go at, the at this time. I do need the two new members' names and their email addresses. Please email to me so that I can get them properly put up onto the website. Um, there's one page of tremendous broken links that is left to be fixed. Richard did one of the pages. I did the other pages. If there's anyone who can volunteer to just do this one page of verifying links and fixing them, it would be amazing. Otherwise, I'll eventually get to it. Um, all committee chairs, but two, have provided their updates, and I want to say, awesome job. Your committee pages look fantastic, and they talk about who's on the committee. They give an overview. If the public needs you, they now have emails. Just really good job, all of you. Thank you so much for doing that. I did add an accessibility statement at the base of every community uh, committee page. Because part of the outreach is about making this welcoming for everyone and we already have some obstacles about where we're located how far it is the ada um, page was actually kind of buried where you couldn't really see that you can get accommodations so i hope it's okay with everyone but i added a small print ada statement at the bottom of all of the committee meeting pages so if anyone if you're doing it at the church if you're doing it anywhere Main contact is Brian, and then Brian would contact the committee chairs to arrange whatever accommodation might be needed. Um, let's see, there's that, getting it directly from you. Yes, if, if the two new board members, if you could please email me the information, I will communicate that to Web Corner. We have submitted a motion to make the website responsive on any device, which includes mobile devices. Now, this is beyond my technological understanding. So I was like, this looks great on the, the phone, what's the problem? But apparently it's gotten more functionality and it can be much better and much more responsive. And hopefully through the Facebook page, like we've got some amazing resource pages that really walk people through the resources in LA, in Studio City. Like there's a lot of great stuff that through Facebook I'll try to kind of educate um, the stakeholders on what we offer on the website, which has not all been accessible on the phone. So Brian will talk about that motion in a little bit, but it just makes everything more accessible to everyone. Uh, here, I also want to recognize Peter Cole. I know he's not here, but he actually created an entire responsive website a while ago, and I just personally want to say I, I didn't know I would have done the work on that website had I realized, long short, you have a website. It is up to date. Um, but also just want to honor that Peter also put in a ton of work that we're not taking advantage of now, but it will be saved. And if anybody ever redoes a website in the future, it's there. Peter Cole, Peter Cole. Um, the slogan tagline recommendation for the Neighborhood Council, we voted, and it was really fun. In the meeting we discussed, uh, there were a few <coughs> options. Studio City, Gateway to the Valley was presented by Richard Adams, and he did a whole thing about why and how this, this matters to us and where it's located. And then we also had Neighbors Together, which was presented by Joseph. They were both wonderful and they both got good votes. The Gateway to the Valley actually won, so Studio City, Gateway to the Valley will be the new um, welcoming tag on the website. And it's cool because you can get pictures from different areas where it really does look like the gateway to the valley. And then, I don't know if you guys know this, but on the, um, from, from our committee, I took Neighbors Together and made that the outreach committee slogan because it's what we're trying to do. So, so thank you for being so active and doing research and participating. 
Um, regarding stu uh, Studio City Neighborhood Council social media outlets, there was a lively discussion about what people are interested in, the parameters, what they want to contribute, and for now it was decided to be a variety, ranging from political to practical, applicable at our homes in Studio City. Anything that supports the mission statement guides what gets posted. Happening specific to Studio City will be especially emphasized, like Luminaria, we'll do posts eight weeks out, six weeks out, four weeks, and, and really build it, that last week, like one week, then a few days, then the day before. So please know that Studio City will be incredibly highlighted, but we also want to include other community building events, Cyclovia, um, <coughs> the mayor's thank you to the firefighters today, the new laws that came out. So on that note, the the algorithms are recommended, to my understanding and research, one to three posts a day. If you each have something, let's say you read Studio City Patch every day. Let's say that you go on a hike or you're into activities that are free throughout the city. Please feel free to email me a link. Ideally, it's, it would be awesome if you could email me what I could just copy <coughs> paste program. But just get me a link and a basic blurb about what you want it said. And I will program that in because I figure if each of you have your interests, then you probably represent all of our stakeholders and neighbors out there with their interests. And if you're already doing that research, it's really easy to just email me that stuff and then I'll include it. If that works for you, there's absolutely no pressure on any of that. Uh, everything I say is pretty much optional. I just want to put it out there in case you'd like to participate. Um, I have to say, most shared posts, I shared and engage our engagement went up 400% in the last week. We've gone up, 19 people on Facebook have liked us in the last month. So we have a really good, over the other neighborhood councils, we have about 1,000 people more than the other biggest neighborhood council that I could find. There's one that's bigger than us on social media. But I thought, oh my god, that's quite a bit of outreach. And then you've got Nextdoor, which is big also. Most shared posts got shared and engaged on more than it actually, it's hard to explain, but Eric Previn. Thank you very much for that. It was a it was an architectural fun car <coughs> guide of Studio City, and it got shared all over the place. Second most popular was the new law about fur, and that let me know for Reduca, because um, you're really interested in sustainability stuff. We have a lot of people in Studio City that are really passionate about sustainability. Um, shared it a lot, commented on it a lot. Uh, videos of board members have been very popular. If you guys catch a little snippet of a video, send it over to me. LA and Studio City homeless topics. And that's, like, those, I was shocked. There was one with a ton of text, and it got shared and read. And I was like, oh my god, people are actually reading the whole thing about homeless. So that's great to know. Um, you are invited, again, to please share those things. Randy, thank you so much. He has linked the Facebook page to the Instagram page. We don't have original account of Instagram yet, but we are having a presence on Instagram. For Twitter, we've still not been able... Oh, oh God, I still have more, okay. So Twitter, we've not been able to access. Um, Marks, we had a really great guest who talked... I'll do some research on the technology thing. Outreach did suggest that maybe someday we could create some sort of a technology um, committee because a lot of this is over our heads, how we could really use this stuff to its fullest. Um, on the social media note, want to echo something. And also think, uh, Randy's posted a few things, Mike Piscatelli's posted a few things, Eric contributed. Um, just anybody who contributes, your presence really matters. What you do matters, and I want to just say thank you for doing that. Um, asking all of you, then also, show of hands, who here had, is on social media at all? Just at all? I just want to ask you, if you could like, I'm happy to email the, all the Studio City links to you. If you could just like the pages, and then if something strikes you to share, it just increases the outreach to your friends and, and our visibility, and it helps a great deal. Again, no pressure, but it would be great. Uh, that is, I think, I'm so sorry if I forgot anyone in saying thank you for the work. Business cards, Richard Adams did all the, re all the research, and you all should be having business cards very soon, and they will be lovely. 
Um, in case you know anybody who's a good fit for outreach, it's, you know, outreach is a big job and we're a little committee and the more people we have, the better that we can grow. Cause I, and Richard's passionate about growing it. Um, group photo, if you guys ever do a group photo, please let me know. I'll show up with my camera and shoot some Facebook stuff and, and post it on there. And hopefully we'll get linked to Twitter. If anyone knows anyone who ever worked our Twitter site, please let me know so we can get a, a password possibly. Um, that's it. Thank you guys very much. Eric, thank you. Let's go down home. Right. Right. Oh, he trained. He showed up in my office and trained. He'll be posting on uh, Facebook very soon. Great. When it has quirky humor in him. Sounds good. Adam. Yeah. Um, <laughs> when should awesome. we do the group photo? Because I know we've been talking about that for a few It was going to happen today, but we have an absence. So I didn't want to have we also a group have photo. Question. Yes, no, yeah, I wanted to do those, but I'm waiting on the VA at the back. So. Yeah, so. <laughs> I don't understand how that works, but well, I'm going to. Offline, we'll talk about it. So We can Photoshop them in there. Yeah, we're not going to do that. Uh, anybody, anybody? I'm sorry, guys. It was a really busy meeting. Sorry. Sure. It was just a long time. Well, along with the comment card and the new logo, can we do the uh, sign in sheet as well? Sure. Is that, will you, I just fit, sorry. The sign <laughs> sheet has the <laughs> logo. Will you send me where, if you've got a Word doc, if you've got a PDF? I made a sign sheet. I can send it to you. Great. It was, it was used for the barbecue, but I haven't circulated. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I get that, that would be great. If I can fix it, I will. Okay. I am so yeah, but you're, I believe I've identified who had the SCNC Twitter. I've shared the name. Um, Alex Beauchart, he was a board member. He said no. He said he does not have it. He, he, did he have any idea who might? Nope. We'll, 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 we'll keep digging. We'll find and it. the other thing we did, just stung on me once or twice, we need new banners. Yep. Okay. Let me keep this going. Michael? Richard? Great. Thank you very much. Okay, um, really quick, i got to slide this in here. We have a public comment from Robert Jackson. Oh, shit. Sorry. <laughs> We're going to do that motion. I'll put the money this way. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me, the president and the board. My name is Robert Jackson, and I work for board member Scott Schmerlson, a unified board member in District 3 and in Northwest Valley and Northeast Valley. We serve about 125 schools and counting. Um, we have about 19 neighborhood councils in our district, so we're at it like every night, two to three. So we're kind of split. So the board member, unfortunately, couldn't be here this month, but he plans to be here next month. Uh, we just have a few updates. First and foremost, the board is excited that we have committees back in the board district. So he's chair of special education committee, which is what his heart is. He really cares about special education. It's what he really values. And also the parent engagement committee. Um, I encourage any, any parents in the audience on the board to get involved with that. I left some applications right there on the table. The application is due October 18th. They meet once a month at Beaudry. And this is where he gets to engage with parents and determine how can he move forward with um, policy slash resolutions that can better benefit parents and student success. We also have a, our annual open house. It's gonna be October 23rd at our office parking lot. We're gonna have live student performances. We'll have light refreshments. And this is an opportunity to connect and network with the board member and other neighborhood councils in our district and other constituents. So please come out. Flyers right here on the table as well. And um, we also have a newsletter. And if anyone's interested, I have it right here. So please fill this out. And we'll keep you connected in our district. And uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. All right, so we got a just, uh, quick back step. I forgot to do the motion. And this is why I'm not chair. I have no idea what we do with this I'm stuff. I'm a bit frazzled. <laughs> okay, so I apologize. Um, all right, uh, I'll read the motion, I guess, and we'll just uh, run through it. Uh, motion 9A, the Studio City Neighborhood Council approves up to $675 for WebCorn to make the SCNC website mobile responsive. I'm bringing Second. this. Great. Um, there was no budget meeting uh, this month, and that's the stuff we're going to work out in the future, not for that committee, but for all committees. Um, but for now, uh, here it is. So, it's a second. Um, any other questions for this motion before we... Can I give a quick yeah, word? Um, this goes back to making the website mobile friendly. I don't do mobile, but oh, I God get bless it. You. This is a good phone. This is my parents. Anyway, long story short, we could have gone out and done surveys and gotten this or that. We already have contract with Web Corner. They're a city approved vendor. It's the sort of thing they do anyway. This was simple and easy to get it done. 
Right. And that's why we just wanted to go this way. It's up to 675 bucks. Did they not give you a price quote? It's 400 to six. It's okay. 450 yeah. to 600. So I said 675 to make sure yeah. that if any surprises. So it's just up to 675. And like I said, they're already an approved city vendor right. to get IT services. My understanding is we can't just go out and contract with anybody. Here's what Gibson. Four approved IT vendors for websites for the city? So for that one, uh, they didn't remove the IC qualification. It's just a small requirement that you have the license. Yeah, but there's only four or five approved contracts. Contractors. Well, the, for internet services? Yeah. They are no longer, the city clerk has no Okay, they changed that. But anyway, I'll we've done business with them for years. They're a known source. In April, I don't see any point in fixing it. Hi, Mark. Um, any other quick board questions? Yes, Eric. I just have a quick question about the. Yes. So, if you're a city chair now and you upload, I mean, and you, you yeah, I don't know. Hold on. Is this relevant to the motion itself? Point of order. Guys, guys, point of order. Let me ask this question, please. Is this relevant to the motion itself? It's relevant to web corner because I'm trying to just ask you. Point of order. We're, we're talking. We're. This is a board discussion leading to a vote. Let's stay on the motion. We're out I'm allowed to give a public comment, Michael, and I'll just give it a brief I understand, but we're not doing public comment. It's not a public comment. comment. I'm sorry. Hold on. Point of, hold on. Hold point of order. I will tie to the motion, sir. You, you already had public comment on this motion, or on this on this item, on the agenda. No. You did not? No, you read the motion, and then I... Outreach committee. I have heard the motion. If it pleases the chair, I, I just want to... No. Thank I'd you. like to move on uh, from this. Any other board comments for this? Move to vote. If, if, if it pleases the chair, what we have we have an order. You you put a motion on. It's open to board comment only, and then we vote. On it. That's the procedure. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay. Any other board comments on this motion? It's been seconded. Great. Okay. Uh, financial. We're going to do a roll call vote. Richard Adams. No. Is that a yes? <laughs> <laughs> Brian. Yes. Michael. Yes. Randy. Yes. Alex? Yes. Raduka? Yes. Elisa? Yes. Richard? Yeah. And uh, Jesse? Yes. Uh, Rick? Yes. Adam? Yes. Tony? Yes. Joseph? Yes. And Lana? Oh, she actually. Oh, she's okay. Okay, so, sorry. Oh, see. You said yes. Great. Motion passes. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. All right. Uh, now, let's move on to the Land Use Committee update. Uh, Lisa Crash. Um, so uh, this is going to be very brief as we didn't have any applications or motions on our agenda um, and I too apologize the night of the meeting since it was on Yom Kippur and the Dodgers were playing on the same night so we had a very low turnout. Um, aside from that I appreciated the list that Allie put together for us to keep focus and uh, do the things that we needed to do to update our website and our page and um, just to modernize our look and feel. And, and I'm very sorry that you're not in the chair. Is that what I understand? You're not getting rid of me, but I'm Richard. I, yes. She's going to be the vice chair. chair. But okay. I'm still going to annoy everybody and push for change. Lucky us. We're yeah. doing what we do best. Um, because I really enjoy your passion and your just wanting to get things done for the good of the neighborhood and the community, which I really appreciate. Um, aside from that, we are working on our mission statement um, and our future goals and revitalizing and just making sure that we keep moving forward and look good doing it. Um, as well as the um, street cleanup, along with um, public safety, Mike, um, doing this on November 10th. Really appreciate bringing this to us as well. Um, so I would really appreciate it if everyone would show up and lend a hand because that part of uh, Ventura Boulevard, the east end between Carpenter and Lancashire doesn't get much attention. Um, people just driving through. But it is, as Richard said, the gateway to the valley. So it does start there at Lancashire. So uh, November 10th, we're most likely to be uh, meeting in the county-owned uh, 
property right across the street from Sun Cafe to start our cleanup, if not there, um, quite possibly the parking lot at Eureka and the Turtle Park. But I'll keep you posted. I'll send out a final uh, email introducing and finalizing the area of where we're going to be. But it's going to be from 10 to 2. We're going to try and get some food. We've got Brandy and I, along with Jessica, have a meeting tomorrow. Jesse, if you want to join us, that would be great. Um, aside from that, looking forward to that and bringing some attention to that end. So thank you. Great. Public comment. All right. Any board comment? Yes, we do. Is there a uh, stakeholder outreach? Because uh, my confusion is a lot of the events that we're supposed to participate, but we're also supposed to, I mean, supposed to um, connect with the stakeholders. I mean, it seems that we're seeing this, or I'm seeing, I'm gonna talk for myself, uh, the same faces, and um, now we are kind of more than half a year into. So I'm really curious in some of these events if actually there is a, some level of stakeholder outreach that people can come and volunteer to stuff that's happening in their community versus right. us being um, so being what's happening for the community. Right. Uh, what's happening is that we're actually having an outreach committee, right? That's what Allie's doing and that's what she was just talking about with Facebook and Not Instagram part of that, and Twitter. And I'm aware of that, but, right. but, but like, it can be that five people are doing outreach for so but that's what the case is, right? Well, no, well, it is, okay. I just the question, but, but the point is, I think the no, you invited. I'm, I'm understanding you're inviting the board members to be part of this event, correct? Right, and then yeah. it's going to go out. The flyer is going to go out to our email database, and it's okay. going to be posted on Instagram. Okay, that's it. That's the answer. Right. Okay. That's so yeah. We're working with outreach for okay. all of that. Great. So and you are preparing the flyer for it? Or? Yes. Okay. As soon as we lock down the um, place that we're going to meet, there's going to be a flyer put together. Okay. It's also important to point out that Corian's office is also going to be pushing this out. Great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I actually approached Brian uh, to design our flyer. So he and I did discuss it. Yeah. Any other board comments over here? Over here? I'm just really surprised that there weren't any applications to build something in Studio City. That's, you know, you should have told everybody should we all go out and buy a lottery ticket. I know. I'm so surprised. And uh, I did announce that there is a lot of demolition going on. So soon enough, we're going to have a lot of applications all at one time because on a monthly, we get 12 to 15 or announcements that there's demolition going on in the neighborhood. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we have the Public Safety Committee updating Michael Piscatello. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Hi. Um, let me just uh, start out with, I'll, I'll back that up too as we're getting along with social media, just so you know. Um, Alex doing a great job with Facebook. I'm sure everybody knows I'm engaging me to reading all of this uh, wonderful stuff, information. Um, we have our Twitter and our Instagram. We have Nextdoor. We have uh, three other Facebooks as well, so everything gets out there. Um, whether or not people actually come is something else, but as long as we get it out there, uh, that's really important. Um, you know, with Twitter as well, the back of what Ali was saying, if you guys get on Twitter, I just put my friend on CNN, um, and he's all over Washington Post now and all of that fun stuff. I've got another one of my friends in Vice. Uh, for a story there. Uh, we got a lot of people like Mike Fuhrer for our National Night Out through Twitter. That's amazing. It is, because it sticks with people. It's instant PR. Twitter is a cesspool. <laughs> but <laughs> with that said, it sticks with you. If you have a business and you write something, forget Yelp, go straight to Twitter and it's immediate. When you get news anywhere, it's already on Twitter. You're already behind the times if you're getting it on NBC or anything else like that. Okay, I'm just letting you know. So the power of the social media, the social media, the power of social media is 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 big. So we try to reach out. And hopefully, people show up. Um, with that said, we also have as public safety committee our own Twitter and our own Instagram and our own Facebook as at Studio City PS. 
uh, is both our Twitter and Instagram, and on Facebook, the same at Studio City PS. So we had a wonderful meeting uh, for the Public Safety Committee uh, last week. We had many new people joining us. Uh, it was generally civilized. Everyone was engaged. We had people from other places as well. Sherman Oaks, North Hollywood, Valley Village. Great, new people. Shocking. But it worked. Uh, the feedback we received was exceptional. So hopefully we can continue to engage the stakeholders in an inclusive way. Uh, you know, and if anyone else would like to see or hear that meeting or wants more information on LA Municipal Code 4118, which was the thrust of that meeting, uh, as well as the proposed amendments, then please you can view the video on the Studio City Neighborhood Council web YouTube page, and the presentation by Jessica begins about 23 minutes in. So, check it out, all fun. Uh, we were also, just so you know, over at uh, Beeman Park. Again, people said, hey, this is a great place to have this meeting. So uh, we'll see about that, and also Walter Reed when we get to the motion coming up. Uh, here's some fun stats, you guys. Aside from our Twitter and Instagram, I talk a lot about CEASE, which is our civilian patrol. So if anybody wants to volunteer, you're more than happy to come on down. Some uh, crime statistics for us here in Studio City. Crime stats for the basic car, and this is going to be coming from John Antonoli, who runs CEASE. We're under CPAP with Patty Kirby. Uh, the basic car area, which runs uh, Ventura Boulevard, uh, from September 22nd to 28th, went from 22 Part 1 crimes down to 11. Part 1 crimes being aggravated assault, burglary, uh, burglary larceny, theft, motor vehicle theft, and more. Uh, they went down by half. So, he says it can be attributed to several things, including officers themselves, but he feels Steve's played a good part in that since we've been hitting that area. So if anyone wants more information on volunteering, uh, we have it on our social media pages, everything you can download. Um, in addition to that, I went out on CEASE the other night, and thank God we're not North Hollywood. Sorry if anyone's from North Hollywood, but <laughs> that Taco Bell, boy, stay away. Uh, I can't even tell you. We couldn't even get some people because you couldn't find the drugs that they threw out. Um, it's bad. That's bad over there, so hopefully we're gonna hit that again. Um, we had an excellent meeting with Jessica today. Jessica, you forget? She's not. But she uh, pulled together something I've been trying to do for three years, which is clean up and and find our neighborhoods. Um, so there's a bridge right there, which has been the constant source of a massive amount of money that we as taxpayers pay us for into cleanups all the time. We've been trying to get a nice big fence up there. Everyone came out of the woodworks today, especially uh, one of the people, Benny, who helped us at uh, Tahunga and Ventura Boulevard put up some wonderful gates. So, if we're moving ahead with this, that'll hopefully uh, cut taxpayer costs down for cleanups. We can put that money into uh, this fence, clean up that little area, that little bridge right there. And to the river? The Judah River, you know there's a fence right now. So um, the short story is switching that out with a wrought iron fence. So people can't fall down there, break a leg, sue the city. So um, people can't um, uh, you know, find a safe getaway from Bluffside after they, which is a high crime area, rob a car right there and jump out and go hide for a little bit, police go by. There's a lot of reasons to uh, block this off um, and keep it safe. So, especially tourists, they're paying money to save the Beverly Gardens. Who are walking up and down on Who are walking up and down. So, um, hopefully that moves forward in the next uh, three months or so, but that is a very positive thing. Uh, we are teaming up with Lisa, Land Use Committee, as well as Jessica Gregorian's Office for the Cleanup. She already said a lot, I won't say any more, it's November 10th. It will go out on, on Facebook once we get everything together, once we talk tomorrow, so we'll hit it as hard as we can. Okay. It'll go, are you kidding me? It's got to go out on Twitter, next door, it's going to go everywhere we can. Um, with that said, we'll get to this motion. Uh, as everyone knows, people have been suggesting we have alternate locations, and I really mean the committee because we have too much stuff here for a board meeting to move anywhere else, is what my opinion is. Um, with that said, uh, we can also jump out and try out Walter Reed Middle School, which is an LAUSD place. For that is a $90 application fee. So, the motion that the Public Safety Committee passed, uh, thank you for bringing this up, Brian, is the studio, motion 11A, the Studio City Neighborhood Council approves $90 for the application fees to LAUSD for use of Walter Reed Middle School to hold future meetings. While we'll do the paperwork, it's for everybody. I'll second it. Great. Uh, public comment. Eric? Um, no, thank you. 
Uh, so, second, any other board comments? I have a question. Yeah. question. So, the application fees are just complete. There will be no more rental fees involved per the meeting, each meeting? No rental fees for the meeting. $90 for six months and then another $90. So, let's try it out. Technically, one eighty a year for applications. Let's try out this ninety dollars. We'll throw our committee through it at the very least. See if we like it. You know, what I mean? So ninety dollars for six months. Yeah. Richard, uh, yeah, I would politely suggest you check with administration to see if that changes during summertime when the school's out of close. Because last time the board looked at using carpenter it was summertime. In the bill. I'm going to get uh, heat. We talked to him two months ago, and then he also came here and said it's free for us. So we'll, we will double check. We'll double check the summertime thing just in yeah. case. Okay. Hey. Uh, Richard. Yeah. Free. Richard. Yeah. Well, we, used, we tried to use carpenter last time. We paid the fee, but things did not work out very well. I hate to lose that money again. Okay. Thank you. Walter Reed. Good. Can you clarify? You said it's for everybody. Means that if we have that, any committee can use it, or yeah. it's just for? Oh, okay. Just we'll make sure that it's to be And with that, I want to bring two of up. So, roll call to the uh, Richard Adams. Aye. Uh, Brian. Yes. Michael. Yes. Randy. Yes. Alex. Yes. Raduka. Yes. Lisa. Yes. Richard. And. Yes. Oh. Okay, speak up. Uh, Jesse. Yes. Rick. Yes. Uh, Adam. Yes. Tony. Yes. Joseph. Yes. And great. Yes. We'll fill the paperwork. We'll see if we get the uh, credit cards. So thank, thank you so much. Okay, great. Moving on to number twelve, the Government Affairs Committee. Eric Kreppen. So we we met uh, at a special meeting on a Saturday morning, but we did give uh, almost seventy-two hours notice. Uh, but we did the best we could, um, and the reason was because there was some timely issues that came up. And you know, I will respect the idea of not having special meetings in the future without permission. There was no special reason other than we hadn't met the month before. So the first motion I would like to withdraw because it came up already, 12A, which is the Jessica mentioning the traffic management plan because uh, I think that we vetted that, and that's basically what the point was, that I felt neighbors should be aware of it, so we put it on the agenda. We did have that meeting on October 8th, and there's another several meetings coming up. So motion with probably no action required on that. Yeah, fair enough. Um, and the other two motions uh, have to do with the same issue that I would like to explain, and somebody on the board would have to make a motion to move this forward because there's no motion made, I notice. So this is a, an issue that was published in the newspaper on the very end of September, where it came out that in the LADWP lawsuit, we all are LADWP uh, rate payers, for the record. We, we pay the Department of Water and Power for our water and power. Um, and there was, uh, the city attorney withdrew a lawsuit against Price Waterhouse, which was one of the groups that had been, uh, you know, supervising rate payer processing. And the first company that was doing that hmm. was replaced by Price Waterhouse. It gets a little confusing, but at the end of the day, um, the ratepayers have had to cough up millions of dollars uh, in this circle. And I say circle because it came out that there were people in the city attorney's office, you know, who believe it or not, were co cavorting with the attorneys who were bringing, you know, with the other companies. So it got very sticky. And about a month before this. The, you know, the FBI showed up at the DWP, wondering what is going on. So bringing it back to something that impacts you know, our board and Studio City stakeholders, and something that I think is worth supporting if the board agrees, um, yeah. it is, is two motions, basically. But, and I'll read them in a minute. But the, the first one is really to ask that you know, Mr. Fuhrer withdrawing this lawsuit, his excuse was because he felt that the people um, who could testify about what went wrong uh, were, in, were pleading the Fifth Amendment, which means they were concerned about self-incrimination. But advocates and others, including Nuri Martinez, who's a councilwoman, and Marty Adams, who's the head of LADWP, said, what? We've got to get the ratepayers' money back. Uh, you know, uh, there are other people who can testify to this, this problem. And, you know, so the motion, the first one, is essentially to, if the board agrees, to request that an independent, you know, the, the U.S. attorney, which is not the city or county government, um, 
you know, do an investigation about how it is that uh, this can be the case that the ratepayers are getting shafted because there's people in the city attorney's office who may be incriminated. I just think that we deserve a better answer on that. And it's not an attack on Mike Fuhrer personally. I know he's the city attorney himself. It's really a request that that issue that affects all of us to the tune of tens and tens of millions of dollars. If you read the article of the LA Times, it says $300 million, but I'm focusing on the 70. But this is an enormous amount of money, and the people deserve better. And you know, I think in all aspects of government, not just Council Member Martinez and the head of DWP, but at the neighborhood council level, it will speak volumes if we request that they look further into this. So that's the first one. And the second one, I'll read it in a minute, is basically um, an echo of that, which is to ask Mr. Fuhrer, who does have some response. He's either complicit, which is a very strong word, or negligent, but in any case, mm -hmm. going forward, what is the corrective action? What are we going to do so this doesn't happen again? Why did this happen? You know, and what is your corrective action? So it's a very short and yeah. perky little motion. So uh, those are the two motions. Those are the issues. Um, I'm, I'm happy to field questions, or I don't know how you'd like to uh, just, read, read them? the motion. Okay, okay. okay, I can read it. Just yeah. do one at a time. So it's all the motion. Sure. I'll read it right now. Great. So the first one. I was having in front of me if you prefer me to read it. Yeah, one. Okay. Uh, so motion 12B, uh, the Board of the Studio City Neighborhood Council votes to send a letter to the U.S. Attorney's Office requesting a special investigation into the recent withdrawal of the payment requesting lawsuit on behalf of ratepayers. Payment processing lawsuit. Payment processing lawsuit on behalf of ratepayers. My apologies. Uh, any board comments on, on this motion? Yes, Randy. Yeah, I did have a question. <coughs> Actually, I, um, no, I, I applaud both of these motions. Um, but specifically, I guess, for 12B was... Um, because uh, according to the vice chair, um, the motion was written up in the meeting, um, uh, and he said there was only one motion that was addressed in the DWP that was actually drafted in the committee. So I just wanted to ask: Is this the is this the specific motion that was drafted in committee that you're bringing to the board to vote on? I'm sorry, A or B? Well, we're starting. Uh, B, oh, yeah, B or C? Right. B so, or C? So B and C were pushed together in one motion, and I broke them out because. They're directed at different people. One was directed at the U.S. Attorney, and the corrective action one is directed at the city attorney himself. So we discussed both of them. I wrote them down, and I chose to bifurcate them. But they are it's the same issue, I think. Um, and you don't have to vote for either of them. I mean, if you, for example, if you only like the first one but don't like the second one, that's, a, that's an option. Or if you only like the second one and don't like the first one. But to answer your question, they were both... I thought discussed. I mean, Rosner was there. Yeah, and we, and we took a vote. So. Yeah, and we voted on it as well. Uh, we voted on both of them, I mean, on all of the motions. And we did it according to the rules that I was learning about last time, which is that, you know, I moved it, somebody seconded it. I have the details of who seconded it. And then we it was unanimous. We went around the room. My, so, no, no, I, I like both of them. My, my understanding of process is that the motion should be written out, and that's what's voted on. I, I understand the, the rationale behind behind bifurcating, but I'm just simply right. saying as a part of process, the actual process is the motion is specifics are written out, the committee votes on it, and that's then presented to the board. Not, not uh, we discussed it, generally speaking, uh, and then after the fact, it, the, the, that the, whatever the committee agreed on is then bifurcated. But in the spirit of this, I, I, I agree with both. Thank you. Uh, board comments that align. I want to one. I would like to recommend sending this, uh, these two motions back to committee because in the future I would prefer to have supporting documents that come with these motions. I mean, it's wonderful that our committees have done such thorough work, but I believe as board members, we are not in it as deep as, our, as we rely on our committee members, but we also need to have supporting documents to tell us a little bit more information about what it is that we're, uh, we're supporting, especially when we start sending out letters to the U.S. Attorney's Office and to our own city attorney who we're trying to build relationships with. And a point of order there, there was a link to both the draft of each of the letters and also the five page LA Times update that was published on September 27th in the paper of record. So I don't know if you didn't get through to the link, but that's. Uh, I'm a newly appointed board member, so again, I'd like to reiterate how I would appreciate supporting documents to accompany your um, motions in the future. Right, but the supporting documents um, were. I, do, I did not receive those. I mean, physically supporting them here. Mm -hmm. 
also so that all of our other attendees would be able to read those supporting documents as well. Okay, just but for now the link to the agenda. So if you click on the agenda, the actual agenda. Like, like, I don't want to do a whole push back and forth here, but like just note it and uh, maybe future practice. And, yes, Great. based on what Randy recommended, because in committee it was only one motion and then now we see two. I'd like to send it back for clarification. Is this an official uh, motion to the table? Yes. Is there a second for that motion? I'll second. second. Okay, all in favor of, of tabling 12B. All opposed. Uh, all the same. All right. Um, it stays active. Right? Yeah. Oh, I've got okay. Huh. Um, now there is a public integrity office of the LA County District Attorney. Okay. Granted, Los Angeles, it's all Chinatown, Jay. They may be too close to the problem. Would not have our time believing them. But is there a state public integrity office? I'm not really sure, but maybe the state attorney general might be better suited to deal with the problem in California than the feds, because the FBI may have visited the DWP. But if they're doing their own little investigation, the city attorney's busy on that, and he's not going to jump in on this, is my take on it. So there might be somebody a little closer to home, a little more interested in responding to citizen rate than the DOJ. Great. Yes, Richard. Has Fred Pickle come out one way or the other on this matter? He's a great advocate. Yeah, they're all the same. That's a question you recognize. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I did miss both of them. Uh, the Attorney General of the State of California, Javier Becerra, uh, is copied on the draft letter, but is linked on the agenda. Yeah, just what's the right link? Yeah, but I don't think you should go to him. My experience has been that they don't, it, they don't uh, take action, uh, frankly. But the reason why was you identified was that the FBI had done the initial investigation on that. They worked with the U.S. Attorney, so would have access to whatever's going on. So, and then, um, what was your question? Here? Fred Pickle, the yeah, Fred Pickle is terrific. Uh, the rate payer advocate um, also came out, you know, in, with concern about this, but he uh, is not doing anything that I can see. To Frank well, why don't we send a letter? Of support? Hold on a second. I got, I got to do this in order. Um, Michael, uh, I'm just. It was just the, my question is the wording of the. Um, we're asking the U.S. Attorney to look into. Uh, to open a special investigation into the withdrawal of payment processing lawsuit. So I'm like, I'm not sure, like, why are we, why are we targeting that for the U.S. attorney and not um, the case itself? Like, we're we're looking at the at the withdrawal of the case, the action of withdrawing from from the prosecution. Because, as I understand it, of the fifth, the fifth, they took the fifth. Their witnesses took the fifth. Right. There are some witnesses at the city attorney's office. How do we know that falls under the, the U.S. attorney? My only question is, I think, is where well, I'm going. Well, U.S. Right attorney, now. good question. The yeah. U.S. attorney. I mean, you know, we, we spent a fair amount of time in the meeting discussing who could we get to do anything to protect the ratepayers, and you know, we concluded that the U.S. attorney's office. And by the way, there is not a strong expectation that they're going to do anything for the record. <laughs> you know, I don't want to mislead anybody. I, we, I wish they would look closely at it. I really feel like the ratepayers uh, are getting screwed over some legal back and forth. But, you know, so to answer your question, there is an Office of Public Corruption at the U.S. Attorney's Office, and it is public corruption when attorneys are working on both sides of transactions where the ratepayers are feeding out lots of money. So, you know, the, the taxpayers have a strong interest in that protection. And we thought that the U.S. Attorney's Office was good place to send a note to that the group saying, you know, and again, we're not alone, but if you read the letter, we're along with other council members, with the head of ATWP, with, you know, good government groups. I mean, this is not a, it, it, it is a bold thing to do because we care about our rate payers in Studio City, but, you know, so that, I don't know if I've answered the question. Maybe. Yeah, I always worry about, when I, when I think about these things, the concern is like, are we asking the government to go spend more money to investigate an investigation? That's going to cost money. Do you know what I mean? Like, are we actually are we actually like spending more money investigating than we are going to get back? And that's that's always my like. Oh, that's a reasonable question. Yeah, I get it. No, no. All right. Yeah, no. I mean, everyone's peppering this with really valid concerns, but uh, obviously, with the hen uh, with the with the fox uh, guarding the hen house, as usual, anything within the city of Los Angeles 
will somehow be uh, rectified. Uh, we need outside, in my opinion, outside uh, ethic. oversight and ethic uh, review. Pleading the fit inside your own city is, is absolutely ludicrous. Uh, we as taxpayers have been screwed long enough by what I would believe is the biggest mafia in our city, which is the DWP. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a horrible, horrible uh, uh, entity that's actually uh, bringing forth uh, 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 all of the uh, lack of, of affordability we're all concerned about. It's a huge aspect of that. Uh, people can't afford to live in their homes or apartments anymore due to this. So I would absolutely, I would have preferred to have uh, paperwork. Uh, I do appreciate the links. Uh, but, but anything that can bring uh, outside oversight, I'm all in support of. Because anything within the city of Los Angeles is moot. It's, it's, it's a joke. So. I just want to note that I'm horrified that a good Italian boy like him would insult my, the mafia by comparing him to the That's good. Okay. Noted. Let's uh, <laughs> just do a vote. That's okay. Sure. Uh, I don't know if we're going to do Okay. Um, okay, so just be a hand vote. So all in favor of motion 12B. All opposed. All the same. One, two, three. Great. Thank you. Which is it? Eleven A or eleven B? I mean, uh, twelve B. So that is the one. Uh, that is. Let's read it so we're clear, right? Because I, I, are we confused? Do we get it? No, no, no. Twelve A one. Twelve A one. The U.S. Attorney one, not the. Yeah. And C is the yeah. table until another time. Is that what happened with C? No. We haven't. No. Okay. We, we, we officially moved the table twelve B, yeah. and it, the tabling was defeated. So oh, I should say that. Now we're moving on to see. And, and Mr. President, may I ask who will write that letter and what will the text and body of that so the, information be when we see a copy of it before it's mailed? It is linked to the agenda. A draft of it is. A draft of it is. And what I'll do is, for the record, I will send it to uh, you and the board in print line copy. Mm -hmm. And then I hope that you will send it to, uh, she's not here, she's not here, but uh, Alexa will send yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. So that's, yeah. the, that's the protocol. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on to 12C. Any public? I mean, could we? we I'm sorry, we don't have a public comment for this motion. Why not? Uh, there's no comment card that I have in front of me for uh, motion 12. Oh, who are you talking to? Yeah. Okay, motion 12. Do you want me to read this one? Sure. Okay. Uh, the board also requested the city attorney, Michael and Fuhrer, uh, publish a corrective action plan to regain public confidence and seek independent advice as to how to continue or refile the case on behalf of ratepayers who deserve both answers and relief. And that is, uh, the draft of that is with page two of the So, uh, any other board questions on, on this motion? Yes. Joseph, oh, yeah. what's your expectation of this motion? So, thank you for asking. I think corrective action is incredibly important uh, for our leaders and for us. You know, if we make a mistake or if he makes a mistake, you know, I think many people are prepared to accept that because they're always making mistakes, but how are we going to fix it and prevent it? So I'm hoping that he will state, at least, you know, superficially and maybe in writing more substantively, this is what we're doing to prevent this kind of thing from happening again. You know, I think that if we got into the weeds of it, what he might say is, I need to do a better job of hiring people because these guys, you know, rip me off and I feel as bad as you want to go. You know, he will strike that pose. But he has to think it through because a corrective action means how do you prevent this systemic thing from happening? You know, if it is systemic, and two people, you know, is bad. And this is not the only issue with that office as we've heard from the other members of the board. So I, I, my expectation is that they'll take it seriously, but you know, I don't know for sure. Any other board comments on this? Yes, Richard. Uh, to be honest with the public statement, I have never had any faith in Michael Fuhrer. I have very little faith in the city attorney's office. My experience is the vast majority of people working there are the city attorneys because they weren't good enough to get hired at a real law firm. And everybody downtown is happy with the status quo. They'll get a good giggle on this letter, won't hurt to send it, but here it is. No. There's an army phrase I will not use because there's ladies present. Great. Um, I'd like to move to a vote. You guys uh, all in favor of motion 12C. <coughs> Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All opposed. All abstained. Great, motion passes. Thank you very much. All right, and moving on to item number 13, the bylaws committee update. <laughs> <laughs> 
excellent and short and sweet. <laughs> and it was, oh, you guys have too much drama. And these are copies. <laughs> so I'd like to welcome Alexis Steinberg onto the bylaws committee, and we've accepted Peter Cole's resignation. All the committee members were present. The bylaw changes that uh, they were voted on have been submitted. They were submitted to Dunn on the 19th. Dunn is currently reviewing them, and it is targeted to be on Bonk's agenda for November 5th. We don't have the date, uh, we don't have the location or the time yet, um, but I would plan to be at that meeting. So, fingers crossed. I can speak to Gibson tonight. I'm clarifying a few things. He had a question about um, The bylaws committee is changing to quarterly. Our meetings will be held the first Monday of the first month of the quarter. Our next meeting will be on January 6, 2020. Meetings may be called early or if needed. We are having another parliamentary training. It is scheduled for Monday, October 28, from 7 to 9 p.m. It's open to the public. And What's the may I suggest every board member have taken the parliamentary training. Um, it's, it changes these meetings to go until no more than two hours. This one should have been way shorter with parliamentary training. The bylaws committee will revise the committee chair manual with input from the chairs. There was a request from the stakeholders to address serial communications and how many boards may, board members may serve on the standing committee. We had that discussion with the following clarification. A serial communication occurs within the CNC board if more than four board members discuss or advocate an issue outside of a properly noticed meeting on a topic within the jurisdiction of this board. Thus, serial communication by definition cannot occur within a properly noticed meeting. The Brown Act clearly limits board membership on the standing committee to less than a majority, which would be seven board members. Our current rules limit board membership to four, and we chose not to take action to increase it. All other discussion was not resolved and will be put back on our agenda in January after we have approval from bond of bylaw changes at which time we will be discussing the formation of the election committee, and that may be of some interest to the board members. Thank you very much. Uh, public comment. Good, Eric. Thank you. Great. Board comments. Thank you. Thank you. What time did you say? 7 to 8? 7 to 9. It's a two-hour <coughs> training. And where, and where is sure. it located? You must RSVP to me so that I don't have to give a room to get. If okay. small enough, you will be in the regular office. Have you had something? <coughs> Thank you. Oh, okay. Are you going to send out an email about the August 28th? Um, I just asked Ellie to put it on the calendar. Oh, wait, I do Facebook. I don't do. I don't know how to do calendar. I can do calendar. Yeah. That's good. All right. Any other? We can send Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. So this is a uh, moving on the 14. This was what Don has suggested to do instead of. Uh, board comments within their jurisdiction. So anyone who has an announcement, and it actually has to be an announcement, I've been told, uh, we'll start on that side and work our way down. Yes, Richard. Uh, fair warning, uh, Outreach will be bringing a draft budget for next year's Totally Awesome Summer Kickoff, task code number four. And uh, I'll talk to you later about the whole done right. legal advice thing. Uh, Richard, just want to help get some help cleaning up the room from the tops of the board. Thank you. Hey, Richard, are you going to post for the other two events? Are you going to send an email that just kind of highlights what you need done? Yes. Yeah. Fill it out, put your name on it, choose what you want, and somehow get it back to me. Scan it back to me, send me an email, call me, and it doesn't make a difference. But I was talking about the other two events. He'll, yeah, talk okay. after this. All right, and uh, with that, if you'd like to get updates for the specific plan, um, please sign up right here. And we'll leave it right here. So. And that's it. Uh, and with that, I move to adjourn. Second. Thank you very much. Good night.